Forsaken. Shifters Forever Worlds Book 12. By L. Thorne. Chapter 1. Eight years of top-notch military training for this. Eight years of serving in the most elite unit of shifter soldiers, protecting a multitude of countries in a coordinated effort. Eight years of killing and avoiding being killed. And this was what he'd become. A glorified damned babysitter. Sure, the pay was good. Damn good. He'd admit that. And the subject was easy on his eyes. He enjoyed the opposite sex. He loved looking at a beautiful, curvy woman. And now he had one as his subject. It was easier to think of her as a subject. At least that way he could distance himself from her. The last thing he needed was entanglements. He bit back the bittersweet smile, trying to slip onto his lips. Half Greek, half Irish, his temper was only matched by his passions. Nikolaus Papas Nico to his friends hung up the phone. He was at the Caffineo in Athens, drinking a cup of thick Turkish coffee, waiting for his subject to come out of the shop across the street. Rafael Tiero had given Nico a choice. He could either pretend to be a guest on the cruise, or he could be an employee. The ship was too small. There were no other options that wouldn't arouse the suspicions of Rafe's baby sister, Sophie Tiero, while Nico kept watch on her. Nico had chosen to be a guest. If he was an employee, he might have been assigned to a task that would keep him from being able to keep an eye on her. And Rafe Tiero's instructions were clear. Take care of my baby sister. Rafe made it sound as if it would be a big job. How hard could it be? Nico already knew what she looked like. A stunning, curvy female. Hair so blonde, he'd never seen the likes of it before. She seemed sweet and mild. The worst he'd have to deal with, he was sure, was the occasional man hitting on her. Mentally he shrugged, but the idea left a bitter taste in his mouth. Why did the idea of another man hitting on her bother him? His panther snarled at him, knowing damned well why it bothered him. Nico had been following the woman for three days so far. He'd found himself in one shopping center after another, following her while she shopped. And she rarely bought anything. He was being way too relaxed about his reconnaissance. He should have gone into the store with her. But in a women's dress shop that small, a solo male would be noticed. Plus, after three days of watching her go into store after store, he'd seen no logic in following her inside. It wasn't like she had a reason to try to give him the slip. There was no way she knew he was following her. Nico stifled a yawn, stretching, adjusting the dark sunglasses, today's disguise. He was in a suit and had donned a turban for the day. Nothing like pretending to be something totally different from what you were from day to day. Yesterday, he dressed as an American tourist, including some extra padding under his Hawaiian print shirt to give him a different look. A scruffy, long goatee had completed the outfit. Today, he had a nicely trimmed goatee to go with the suit and the turban. Being half Greek helped, and naturally gave him something close to the complexion of a Saudi man. He needed to pick up plenty more hunter's block from his stash to carry along on the cruise she'd booked, or she'd find out he was a shifter the minute he ran out. He'd better get enough for a couple of weeks, just to be sure. Christ, he hoped this job didn't last that long. He stifled another yawn. This was not what he'd trained for. He was an adrenaline junkie, action-oriented. Should he order another coffee? He glanced at his watch. This was more boring than the most boring assignment he'd had in the military. He fought the urge to call Gavin and cuss him out for having put him here. Why had he recommended him for this damn job? Nico had trusted Gavin implicitly since their time in the Middle East. He'd never led him astray. They'd served in the Sigma Eps together, until Gavin killed the second lieutenant for fucking up in a major way. Nico kept his gaze on the door. She'd be out any moment now, or he'd have to go in after her. Sophie snuck a look at the man in the turban, sitting at the Caffineo. He was wearing a nice suit and had a well-trimmed goatee. Why is he following me? Why is he staring at me? Hey, 
Without taking her eyes off the sexy chic, she tilted her head toward the clerk manning the register. Yes, miss? There's a man out there. Okay, a hellaciously sexy man she had to admit. Her tigress snarled in agreement. I think he's following me. The clerk came toward Sophie, looking out the window. Don't be obvious. Sophie pulled her back. I don't want him to know I've spotted him. Do you know him? I wish. Maybe. If he's not a dangerous stalker. No. Maybe she shouldn't wish to know him. What woman in her right mind would want to know a man who was following her? Except Sophie didn't get a dangerous vibe from him. At all. Not the creepy kind of dangerous. Though he did give off an air of a whole different kind of dangerous. The sexy kind of dangerous. Do you want to leave in such a way he does not notice you? The clerk's English was clearly not her native tongue. She had the cutest accent and way of talking. That's exactly what I want. Sophie dug into her purse, pulled out several euro bills and handed them to the woman. No, that is not necessary. I would help you. There is no need to pay me. Please take it for your trouble. And your help. I also want to buy a dress and a hat and some dark sunglasses. Put them on this credit card, please. Sophie half watched the clerk as she picked out a few random items fitting the description in Sophie's size. Sophie's other eye was on the chic. He fiddled with his coffee, keeping his eye on her. Was he someone she'd met out clubbing? She didn't think she'd forget someone that hot. He definitely was hot, even though she couldn't see his eyes because of the dark shades. The clerk handed her the bag with her newly purchased items. Mind if I change here? The clerk indicated a sign that read fitting room. And you can use the back door if you want. She gave Sophie a wink. Less than two minutes later, Sophie slipped out of the dressing room and through the back door. She was a completely different woman in a matron's dress, flat shoes, and a floppy hat that would cover her face if she angled it just right. She tied a scarf around her head, concealing the blonde hair that was a dead giveaway. She chanced a glance in the direction of the chic. He had gotten up from his seat and was making his way toward the shop she'd just vacated. Turning her back on him, Sophie picked up her pace without looking too obvious and headed down the busy tourist street. She needed to get packed and over to the docks at Piraeus. They were supposed to launch later this afternoon. She smiled inwardly at the idea she'd booked a spot on one of the Tierro boats, but hadn't told them she was a Tierro. She'd had enough of smothering. She'd obeyed her father's request to return to Europe, but she had no intention of living the life he'd planned for her. Being the baby in the family wasn't always a blessing. Everyone thought they could boss her around and butt into her business. She smirked. Let them butt in now. They'd never be able to find her. For the first time ever, she wouldn't be a Tierro. She'd be herself on a little cruise, enjoying the islands. Okay, okay. And if she had to admit to it, she wasn't just going to enjoy the islands. She was going so she could do some thinking. She needed to come up with a plan and the backbone to stand up to her father. She didn't want to be the one who always kowtowed to him. She wanted to be her own woman. To enjoy her own world. And her own dreams. Yeah. The first dream she planned to engage in would be studying medieval romance literature. She didn't care if it wasn't practical. She didn't care if there wasn't a good use to put it to. The next thing she'd wanted to do was become a teacher. She stiffened her back and squared her shoulders at the thought of the battle she'd have convincing her father of these things. I don't want to have to convince him. I shouldn't have to. I should be able to be who I want to be. She'd like to tell her father. Her stomach roiled. Then rumbled. No, no, no. She'd gone several weeks without the vomiting. No. She couldn't get sick. Not now. The wave of nausea washed over her, leaving her with clammy skin and a film of sweat on her forehead. One more secret. Sophie's tigress snarled. I don't want to talk about it. 
She didn't even want to think about it. Maybe she shouldn't simply vanish for a cruise. Maybe she should vanish forever. That would do it. Chapter 2 Disappointus Miss Nico called to the clerk to get her attention. She peeked at him, then glanced down, as if whatever she was doing was far more important and interesting than a man dressed like a sheik would be. Could you help me, please? He approached her. The clerk flittered in front of him, her hands moving nervously as she arranged the items on the hangers. Nico studied her. Her movement became more frantic, bringing to mind a little mouse holding something between its paws as it moved excitedly. Valista. Indeed. She glanced up, as if she expected him to change into a predatory creature. If she only knew. I'm looking for a woman. We have had no women today, sir. None. What the hell? I'm looking for a woman who came in here a few minutes ago. Blonde, beautiful, built like this. He made an hourglass shade with his hands, a low wolf whistle emitting from between his teeth. She's got a lot of curves, pretty smile. Light eyes. Ochi. Kamiya Gaineka. No. No women at all. Had Sophie bribed her? He was going to use the, she's my girlfriend and I can't find her bit, until he saw the expression on the clerk's face. She'd definitely been bribed. I don't think you understand. Nico reached into his pocket and pulled out the Interpol identification he carried. Fake, of course, but a damn good fake, he knew that for a fact. She's wanted. And you're going to face charges if you obstruct our efforts. She caved like a popped balloon. It almost saddened him to see her deflate. All the bravado Sophie had bought and paid for vanishing. The clerk's hands began to tremble. The hangers clattering together. She put them down and clenched her fists against her sides. She went out the back door. Floppy hat flats, matronly dress. You'd better hope I find her. How long ago? Less than a minute, sir. I'm so sorry. Tears welled in her eyes. He was gone, barely registering her distress in his own panic. He was going to kill the beautiful blonde. How did she put the situation together? What had given it away? Was it the outfit, or had he stared too hard? It couldn't be the hunter's block. It hadn't worn off already. It was too early. He looked up and down the street. No floppy hats. Son. Oh. A bitch. He deserved whatever hell Gavin and Rafe Tierro were about to dish out on him. He pulled out the GPS tracker. He dropped a tiny tracking unit into her purse yesterday, when he'd bumped into her as the clumsy American tourist. He'd at least know where she was, as long as she had her purse. Hopefully the cruise she'd booked was still part of her plans, and or she didn't lose her purse, or his ass was grass. Nico had been staying at the same hotel as Sophie. When he arrived there, the GPS tracker said she, or at least her purse, was there too. Now he could pack his overnight bag and head toward the docks, assured she wasn't out of his reach. The electronic double doors whisked open. He slipped into the dim lobby. Sir. The red-haired front desk attendant got his attention. She'd shown up at his hotel room two mornings in a row. Room service, she'd said, though he hadn't ordered any. He'd had to decline. There was no way he could afford to be preoccupied with the redhead's charms, while Sophie Tierro had to be watched. Oh, hell. Who was he kidding? He'd rather watch Sophie Tierro while she was fully dressed than the redhead fully nude, though the opportunity was tempting. Good afternoon. He kept his greeting brief. He needed to get going. Sir, there's a box here for you. She gestured. Several. He made a quick U-turn thinking it was funny how her voice hadn't irritated him earlier, but it sure as hell did now. Have them brought up, please. He headed to the stairs, avoiding the elevator. It was unlikely Sophie would be on the stairs, so he'd walk up all eleven floors to avoid being seen by her. He wanted to ask the redhead if she'd seen her, but was worried she'd give him away. 
he couldn't call Rafe and ask him if he'd heard from his sister. He'd be fired, justifiably, for sucking at his job. He had to have faith that if the unit said her purse was in her room, she was there with it. There was only one thing he could do to find out if she was still at the hotel. It was risky, but what choice did he have? He passed the 11th floor and headed up to the 12th. Hers. Opening the door to the corridor slowly, he made sure there was no one around. He slipped out and stopped in front of her door. Shifter hearing time. He listened, leaning against the wall, acting nonchalant, in case anyone walked by. Then he heard it, Sophie's voice. Who was she talking to? He heard her say, Lila. One of her sisters. Should he listen in? Was there a possibility she'd catch him? I'm fine, Sophie was saying. No. I'm in Athens. I'm leaving this afternoon. A long pause. No. I'm not telling you where I'm going. You tell our cousins to mind their own business. Maybe I didn't come to Athens to see them. Another pause, this one shorter. It's none of your business why I came here. The sound of a sliding door slamming shut. He had to pack and be ready to go. She was still on course for the cruise. Nico made for the stairwell and ran down the stairs. He beat the bellhop with the boxes to his room, but only by a few seconds. After he tipped the young guy, Nico shoved the boxes into his room and began to open them. He told Rafe Tierro he didn't have the kind of wardrobe that would allow him to fit in on a chartered cruise. Rafe had replied, I've got a man who can set you up with everything you need in Athens. I'll have it sent to your hotel. That had been yesterday. Today, the box had arrived. Also a suitcase, shoes and accessories. He threw on a pair of slacks and a golf shirt and grimaced in the mirror. He was a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy. Damn. He felt sissified. Got to fit in, though. Rich man's camouflage, he scoffed to his panther. The tracker beeped. It showed movement. He shoved everything else in the suitcase and headed out. The tracker had frozen just outside the lobby. What's going on here? He stepped outside. Fuck. Her purse was in a trash can, its leather handles protruding from the open container. Damn. Damn. He ran inside, gave the redhead at the front desk cash for his room and checked out. He grabbed the first taxi he saw and told the driver to head for the docks at Piraeus, a good 45-minute ride away. Nico adjusted his outfit. He couldn't get comfortable in this stuff to save his life. I'm not a damn babysitter. I'm a soldier. Why the hell did I agree to this part of the job? I should have had a partner. But Rafe had insisted it be a one-man team. Two men working together would be suspicious. That Sophie had become accustomed to her father having her tailed by a team of two. Nico cursed himself for agreeing to take on this mission. The stress of trying to keep up with this woman was costing him years of his life. He didn't see her. He waited 30 minutes. No sign of her. Surely she hadn't beaten him here. No taxi cab would have gotten her here quicker than his had. Maybe he'd lost her. He couldn't exactly ask the attendant, checking the guests in at the end of the ramp. Damn. Okay, time to own what a fuck-up he was. He pulled his phone out of his pocket. The first call he'd make was to Gavin. He owed it to his former Sigma Epps leader to tell him the truth. He sighed an exhale that felt like it had been ripped from his very core. This was the first time he'd let Gavin down. Ever. Then Nico would call Rafe Tierro and tell him Nico had lost his sister. Then I'll probably never work in the security business again. Maybe that's good. I'd rather be soldiering. How had he let his guard down with her? That was so damned unlike him. How did you let this happen? He snapped at his panther. We're in this together. You're supposed to be my backup. His panther roared at him. Sure. You had me so convinced she was harmless that she wasn't up to anything. Blah, blah, blah. 
Nico didn't really blame his panther, but he wanted to rip someone's head off because he was supposed to be taking care of her. Fuck. What if someone had kidnapped her? What if something had happened to her? What if someone had hurt her? The idea of the beautiful, vibrant woman lying hurt somewhere made his gut clench. He had to call Gavin. Now. He tapped the phone screen so vehemently, a tiny crack formed in a corner. He put the phone to his ear. Someone with perfect white blonde hair, not a strand out of place, was making her way up the ramp. She had her back to him, but he knew from that ass it was her. An ass like a temple he'd like to worship at. Hello. Gavin's voice penetrated through the fog of Nico's admiration. Nico. Gavin had clearly seen his number on the caller ID. Yeah. Sorry. Hey. Nico fought to get his concentration back on Gavin. What's up? Everything okay? Is Sophie all right? All good. Yeah. Just leaving. Heading out on the cruise. Thought I'd touch base. Which was mostly bullshit, since Nico never touched base with anyone. Gavin was silent. Nico cleared his throat. Finally, Gavin spoke. Thanks for this. You had me concerned for a while there. Yeah, me too. Nope. Nothing to worry about. No fucking way I'm letting that stunner get out of my sight again, even if I have to seduce her and spend every night in her cabin. The prospect made his pants tent. Damn. He needed to cool it and get on that fucking boat before it sailed off and left his ass here on the dock. Chapter 3 Good afternoon, miss. The attendant at the end of the ramp glanced up from his clipboard. Name? So-so, she'd almost given him her name. She'd lost track of her thoughts. She'd seen a gorgeous man at the other end of the ramp, clearly busy, clearly preoccupied, holding a phone, his body tense, his arm muscles bunched up, tendons protruding. With a defined chest, obvious even through his shirt and shoulders wide enough to block a door, the man was unmissable. It didn't help he had a face that could stop traffic. Lips so sensual and full, it was unfair they were on a man. Except to the woman who was kissing that man. Then it would be more than fair. It would be damn pleasurable. The man smiled at something, probably the person he was talking to on the phone. Probably a girlfriend. She sighed, not realizing it until the breath was past her lips. Miss? Your name? What name had she made the reservation under? Of course. Soleil Templeton. She smiled a brilliant smile at the guy, hoping he'd let it go. She had a temporary ID she'd gotten from a friend. It wouldn't hold up with any government agency, but it wasn't like she was crossing borders for goodness sake. Here you are. He marked a spot on the clipboard then smiled back, not immune to her charms. Her tigress growled at Sophie. I'm not picking him up. He's just checking me in. Relax. Shall I have your bags taken to your cabin, Miss Templeton? He beamed at her. It is Miss, right? Not Mrs? That's right. She glanced at his name tag. Yiani. Thank you. I'd love it. Then I can stop by the open air bar. Because God, she needed a drink, even if it wouldn't do her any good. Being a shifter had mixed blessings and curses. Alcohol had no effect on her. But she could kick almost any man's ass in a fight. Unless that man was a shifter. Then not so much. Still, she'd enjoy sitting at the bar, enjoying the atmosphere as soon as they set sail. The Bella was one of her father's mini-cruise luxury yachts, one of a fleet of twenty. The boats were chartered out for private or business trips occasionally paying for itself with semi-public cruises like the one she was on today. The Bella was one of her father's yachts. Modern, elegant, and sleek, Bella offered all the amenities of a large cruise ship, but the guest list was kept below a hundred individuals and the price was kept well above typical cruises. Sophie hadn't been on Bella since she'd been put out for semi-public use. The vessel used to be their father's favorite, named after her mother. Once their mother had decided she couldn't live with Gio, Sophie's father, 
he'd put the vessel into use by the public. He'd said he would whore the ship out the way her mother whored herself out. Of course, he never said that where his children could hear, but Sophie had overheard him tell her uncle Federico. She'd been furious with her father. She'd never told her siblings what she heard though. She knew Rafe would lose it. Sophie wasn't sure what had happened between her father and her mother, although she did know her father had a terrible temper. She wasn't going to take sides, even when her mother moved to Monaco, into one of Gio's many residences. Gio refused to visit her. She refused to leave. Neither of them would discuss it. No one else wanted to talk about it, either. Sophie was sure of one thing, her mother didn't stead out on her father and Gio was still in love with her. What had created their problems? Sophie walked past the reclining double lounge sunning chairs, past the pool, past the al fresco dining tables, all the way to the end of the bar. It was empty, but as soon as she sat down on the last stool, a bartender showed up. Your pleasure? She ordered a virgin white Russian, because it was better than ordering soda with a twist of lemon. That usually garnered dirty looks from bartenders who were in it for the tips after all, and they measured tips by the total of the bill. No vodka, chocolate syrup instead of the Kahlua, please. She was still livid from finding that electronic device in her purse the other day. It was wrapped in a crumpled up, used gum wrapper, and would have resembled any other piece of trash a woman would find in her purse. Except Sophie didn't chew gum. Ever. She'd let the stupid GPS locator sit in her purse, letting her family track her movements because she knew it was Vax or Rafe. She'd let them think they had her. Until today. Sophie bit back the smile of victory, wanting to plaster itself on her face. She'd gotten the last laugh. On the way to the docks, she'd left her purse in the trash receptacle outside the hotel. That would teach her interfering brothers, wouldn't it? She gazed at the view, at the bustling pier, the smoke rising from diesel engines, listened to the loud, raucous calls of sailors on other boats and the even louder and more raucous calls of seagulls begging for morsels of bread. The bartender put a drink down for her. She gave him her room card. He swiped it, then returned it and vanished in the back. Sophie took a sip of the creamy concoction and glanced at the time on her phone. They'd be on their way in less than 15 minutes. Unless something major happened. I need to quit thinking negative thoughts. Nothing major will happen. I'll get my time away. My anonymity. And my planning sessions. She glimpsed movement out of the corner of her eye and looked toward it. The man. The man on the phone. He was walking her way. She glanced around to see if there was anyone else here, someone he'd be meeting. No one. Maybe he just wants a drink. That's not so unusual. Her tigress snarled. Sophie agreed with the tigress. He was sexy. There was something familiar about the man, though. She couldn't put her finger on it. Maybe she'd met him before. Nico had given the attendant with a clipboard the name Rafe had told him to use. Nikolaus Andreakis. That was the name Rafe had said he'd set him up with. Rafe had said Nikolaus was an old childhood friend of his from boarding school and a real person in case anyone asks questions. Welcome, Mr. Andreakis. The attendant had handed him a magnetic strip card and his cabin number. He hadn't flashed Nico the same smile Sophie had merited, nor had he given him any extra attention. Hey, have someone take this to my cabin if you don't mind. Nico had pointed to the suitcase he'd let another attendant tote up the ramp because he had to play the role of some rich guy. Hope this doesn't mean I have to let anyone wipe my ass, he'd muttered under his breath, feeling odd about allowing others to do work he was more than capable of handling. What's that, sir? The guy with the clipboard axe. Nothing. Just saying this will be a great trip. Yes, Mr. Andreakis. He'd already turned his attention to the next guest coming his way, who, not surprisingly, was female. Nico kept his eye on the platinum blonde hottie who had given him the slip already once today. She was weaving her way across the vessel, turning heads. 
She damn near gave me a heart attack when she pulled that vanishing stunt at the dress shop. Not the kind of heart attack he'd want her giving him. His panther made an approving snarl. Finally. Something they agreed on. She made her way across the deck. The matronly garb she'd bought at the women's clothing shop had apparently been discarded, for which Nico said a prayer of thanks. She was spectacular, in a tight-fitting fabric that clung to every curve, accentuating her ass. Oh yeah, he was definitely an ass man. The dress was floor-length but strapless. Three large chevron stripes of green and navy met at the exact center of her ample cleavage. He'd noticed that earlier. But now, his only view was her ass and hips, an ass that made him think of a luscious apple he wanted to take a bite of, and a set of hips he could hold on to while he pounded away at the treasure she kept so demurely covered under that gown. Oh, hell. He adjusted his pants without missing a stride as he followed her to the open-air bar. She'd ordered a drink and had taken a dainty sip of it already. Interesting choice, considering it wouldn't affect her. Sexual energy took hold of his panther, and he began to pace in Nico's mind. His panther was very interested in her tigress. No, Nico cautioned him. You need to chill. Keep a low profile. Hunter's block or not, I don't need you arousing the suspicions of her tigress. I'm not a shifter here. I'm a plain old boring businessman who's here to. To what? I'm here to recuperate from a nasty divorce. Taking some time. No, that's stupid. I need to be a widower. That'll get me more sympathy and make me seem less threatening. Nico took a seat on the bar stool, farthest from Sophie, so he wouldn't seem eager to be around her. The bartender was psychic, evidently, as Nico's butt hadn't touched the leather seat before he appeared. What's your poison? The bartender asked. Whatever's on draft. The guy pulled a perfect beer, just the right amount of head. What a waste, Nico thought, drinking alcohol that didn't affect him. The bartender took his card, swiped it, and said, I'll be right back there if you need anything. He indicated a door and slipped through it. Nico could feel her eyes on him. He'd noticed the closer he was to her, the more the sensation was like a thrumming of his nerves took hold of him. His panther growled an explanation. Nico frowned. This isn't low-key. The panther backed down and slunk off. His panther's attraction to her tigress was far too distracting. How was he supposed to keep an eye on her when his panther was behaving like this? He realized he was frowning and tried for a more stoic face. If I pretend I'm a widower, she might trust me more, but she'd never be able to think of me in the way I'd like her to. Fuck. Scratch the widower thing. He wouldn't lie. He might be on the job, but one day, the job would end, hopefully soon. And when it did, he'd like to see her again, in a very different capacity. Hopefully, naked. Totally naked, and sprawled across his bed. Must be a good thought. A voice pulled him back, one heavy with sexiness. He glanced at Sophie. Pardon. He'd heard her, but he wasn't sure what she was talking about. You went from a frown to something that almost appeared to be a smile. Her lips curved into a smile of her own, revealing striking white teeth in a face that was a cross between a sex goddess and an angel. How the hell did she pull that off? That look? A look that said she could be as sweet as he wanted, but as wicked as he needed. Her eyes closed a little. Afloat in a sea of aquamarine, her black pupils dilated. He liked that. He inhaled deeply, scenting her, taking her aroma in deep, savoring it, trapping it in his lungs the way he'd like to trap her in his bed. He let the air out slowly. It was a good thought. Her tigress flashed in the depths of her eyes, a deep amber color that contrasted with the aquamarine. Her scent grew heavier. She was interested in him. It's mutual, completely and totally fucking mutual. Chapter 4 Jealousy flared in Sophie's tigress at the smile that had come to the sexy man's face, and she wondered what or whom he would have thought of that maid had him smile like that. Settle down. Jeez, Sophie chastised her tigress. 
She knew what the tigress was jealous about. She'd felt the same envy when she imagined he might be meeting someone special on the vessel. She and her tigress had barely met the handsome stranger. It was too early to get jealous over a thought or a smile. Her tigress snarled. It doesn't have to be a woman. It could have been a good business maneuver. Maybe the stocks in his portfolio went up. But she did wonder what would put a random smile on this handsome stranger's face. To make it worse, he hadn't said a word about it. He just left her hanging without knowing. She wanted to ask if it was a woman. She chanced to look at his hand. No wedding band. Why are you here, she asks, not one to mince words. Why does anyone go on a cruise? He took a drink of the beer. His throat worked as he swallowed, his head thrown back, the muscles in his neck pronounced. A small drop of beer escaped, making its way down past his lip, leaving a trail across the olive-skinned flesh of his jawline. She watched the drop, mesmerized, and found herself wishing she could catch it with her tongue. What the hell is wrong with me? She wasn't one to be struck by sudden attacks of libido. She didn't go around wanting to lick random strangers. Her tigress rumbled her dissatisfaction, still strongly attracted to the man. Settle down. I came here to get away from drama, not embroil myself in more of it. Her tigress roared so loudly she winced, wanting to cover her ears. Everyone has a different reason for going on a cruise. And you haven't told me yours yet. And I'm wondering what made you smile. She bit down on her lips so hard it hurt, forcing herself to shut up. Why did I say that? Why am I pursuing this? I didn't. He shrugged. So I didn't. I'm on a cruise because I wanted to get away. I'm smiling because I did get away. That was no answer. If anything, it made her even more curious. To get away from what? She stirred her drink with its little black cocktail straw. Let me guess. You're getting away from a woman. His smile was dangerously sexy, a little crooked, and revealed a tiny chip in one of his front teeth. No, not getting away from a woman. Just getting away. There was that smile again. The sexy slightly chipped tooth smile. She fought back a sigh, and at the same time, completely understood why her tigress was interested in him. There was something about him. What's your name? Nico. Yours? Nico waited for Sophie to tell him her name. He knew she'd picked another name, but would she tell him or would she lie? His money was on her lying to him, but his ego wanted to say she'd tell him the truth and give him her real name. She was definitely interested in him, and so was her tigress, if his panther's instincts weren't failing him. Nico didn't think they were. Soleil. Soleil Templeton. She took a drink. The cream coated her upper lip, making him want to lick it clean, suck it into his own mouth, then violate and completely dominate her mouth with his tongue. Nice to meet you, Soleil Templeton. How'd you chip your tooth? She touched her own front tooth, her finger lingering in her mouth as her lips closed around it. God. Damn. It. Did she have any idea what this was doing to him? He stared at her finger, mesmerized by all the dirty, nasty things it made him want to do with her. She pulled her finger out, as if she'd suddenly realized what she'd done. Your tooth? How did that happen? I was one of the lucky ones. Wrong place when an IED. No, he couldn't tell her that. Football. No mouth guard. He shrugged. He'd never played football in his life, but for the time being, at least, he didn't want to give her any information about himself. He didn't want to give her a greater hold on him than she already had. He blamed his panther. They'd have it out later, he and the panther. What brings you on board? I needed some alone time. To do some thinking and sorting. Bad relationship. She grimaced. Not the kind of relationship you're thinking of. No harm in prying, Nico decided. Guess you won't expand on that. Her smile was wicked, but not the kind of wicked he'd like it to be. Guess we have that in common. Neither of us is good at expanding on things. 
but she was remarkably good at making parts of him expand. Do you have dinner plans? Had he just axed her to dinner? When he just established, he had to keep her hold on him at a minimum. It's for the job. Just keeping her safe, as I'm being paid to do. As if he believed it. No plans. The depths of her eyes flashed gold deep within the blue. He glanced down at his beer, hoping his panther wasn't going to be foolish enough to rise to the invitation her tigress was issuing. He knew how his panther felt. Hell, he agreed with the panther wholly. But he had a job to do. He couldn't let lust distract him, and he couldn't be complacent with this woman around. She'd already proven that when she'd given him the slip. Down girl. Sophie wasn't sure if she was talking to her tigress or herself. The man had axed her to dinner. Her pulse had raced a little, okay, it had raced a lot. She couldn't remember the last time she'd been one-on-one -on -one with a guy, because family didn't count, and Gavin's security team didn't count either. She was always little Sophie to everyone she knew. The baby of the family, not given responsibility, not taken seriously. She was coddled and yeah, she'd admit to being a bit spoiled. But here was this man, sexier, larger than life, larger than most any man she'd ever met except maybe her sister Lila's mate, Sai. And this man was interested in her. Sophie wasn't all that young, but you'd have thought she was still a teenager from the way her family treated her. She was surprised Vax and Rafe didn't have someone spying on her or had hidden another tracking device in her things. She checked. She hadn't found anything, but to be extra sure, she'd bought herself brand new everything. She'd even left her phone behind. She'd picked up a disposable phone though. Just in case. She thought about the man who'd been at the Cafeneo, the one who'd reminded her of a sheik or an Arab prince from a romance novel. Surely he wasn't following her because of her brothers. None of Gavin's men looked like him. She'd have known. That man had oozed sexiness the way a tree oozed sap. Why did she suddenly have an image of honey dripping down his tanned skin and licking it off? This man, Nico, he was equally sexy. No, he was probably sexier. Should she have dinner with him? She had a lot on her mind, and the cruise was only seven days long. Did she want to give up her evening for some light flirtation with a sexy stranger? Her tigress waited patiently for Sophie to finish her thinking, not jumping in, not influencing her. The moment Sophie determined she should pass on dinner, her tigress lost control and roared, thundering in her mind about declining the invitation. Sophie gripped the table's edge against the raging storm of her tigress's irritation. Sure. Dinner sounds fine, she surrendered, smiling at the sex on a stick sitting at the other end of the bar. What cabin are you in? I'll pick you up. His brownish gold eyes glinted in the afternoon sun. His aquiline nose contributed to a profile that took her breath away. She'd seen a statue of a Greek god once at a museum, and she'd decided it was the epitome of perfection. This man had the same profile. It was as if his face had been used as the mold to create that statue long ago. A6. Eight o'clock sound good? And with that, Sophie's tigress got her way. Happy? Sophie acts. She could have sworn her tigress was purring, though she didn't purr. It was a low growling sound, a chuffing deep in her tigress's throat. A loud horn signaled their departure from the docks. Sophie downed the rest of her drink and excused herself from the bar with, See you at eight. Chapter 5 Nico stretched out on the bed in cabin A7. It wasn't an accident, his cabin was next to hers, Rafe had arranged it. He could hear her through the thin walls, unpacking, putting things away, and on occasion, she'd murmur to her tigress. When he'd invited her to dinner, his panther had noticed the jump in her pulse. Her tigress was immediately on board for dinner, and though he knew Sophie had an attraction for him, she had still hesitated over declining the invitation. Nico put his hands behind his head, and crossed his feet at the ankles. The bed was almost too short for him, his heels an inch away from being off the mattress. He tried to focus on what she was saying, but even with his shifter hearing, she wasn't talking quite loud enough. 
He glanced at his watch. Five to eight. Almost dinner time. A minute later, Nico knocked on her door. He'd put on a black suit Rafe had graciously provided, and damn if he didn't feel trussed up like a Thanksgiving turkey. She opened the door immediately after his knock, so quickly he wondered if she'd been standing by it. His breath hitched when the open door revealed the woman behind it. Hell, his breath wasn't the only thing that reacted to her. His entire body went into a state of hyperactivity. His pulse raced out of control, and his heart beat a primal rhythm that sounded loudly in his head. Hot damn! A vision to behold, she stood before him in a black dress that was demure, and at the same time, pulled off sexy with a triple X. Strapless, held up by a set of magnificent creamy full breasts, the dress tapered down to a waist couch between a set of hips that flared wide, just the way he liked them, and those amazing breasts begging to be released. He couldn't control the whistle that slipped between his teeth, though when he realized it, he clamped his lips together and slammed the brakes on his racing heartbeat. He wanted to lavish her with compliments, but somehow that didn't seem right. He was being paid to do a job here. Might want to remind my cock of that. Definitely might need to remind his cock, because damn if it wasn't throbbing. Thank you. She acknowledged the low whistle. You clean up well. She smiled, lip gloss emphasizing her full lips, making him think of where he'd like that lip gloss to leave a temporary tattoo. Thanks. Though he'd rather not be in this suit, feeling more comfortable in his shorts or jeans. He'd rather be on a beach or rafting or mountain climbing or hiking. Anything but this social game that made him something he wasn't. He put his arm out, the way he remembered his father doing for his mother. That had been a long time ago, considering he'd spent the greater part of his adolescence in a shifter orphanage on a remote island right here in the Aegean until his extended family had found him and brought him to America. There he'd become close to Gavin who was related to him on their mother's side. Both of them were motherless at that point. At least Gavin had had a father, although his father was now spurning him because of what had happened with his brother. One of these days, maybe Nico could run into Gavin's father and tell him what a fool he was. He escorted Sophie to the Al Fresco dining area, then realized he'd made a decision without bothering to ask her opinion. Want to eat Al Fresco? Or would you prefer indoor dining? Oh, al fresco for sure. I can't imagine being locked up inside when we could be out here enjoying the ocean. A woman after his own heart. His panther snarled. A woman after both our hearts, he corrected himself. The panther grumbled agreement. After he'd seated her, and they'd ordered water and an appetizer of octopus in tomato sauce, a rustic loaf of Greek bread was served with a Greek salad. He raised his glass in a toast. To an uneventful, relaxing trip. Funny you mention that. I overheard the porters talking about Meltemi winds. He knew about the Meltemi winds all too well. You didn't grow up in the middle of the Aegean without knowing the Meltemi winds created by the low pressure from Turkey and the high pressure coming from the Balkans could create some powerful winds. Nico nodded, not about to tell her his history. No one really knew much about his life other than Gavin, and he'd just as soon keep it that way. I'm not surprised. And don't be surprised if they have to take us ashore somewhere for safety. I'm sure we have a talented captain. Oh yes, Kyriakos is one of my F.A. Her lips shut immediately, turning into a forbidding line. He bit back a smile. She'd almost given herself away. He knew she was going to say, my father. He looked toward the setting sun to keep her from seeing his acknowledgement of her mistake and his amusement with her discomfort. I've heard good things about the captain, she backpedaled. Nico spent the whole damn night wanting her. The way she'd lifted the fork, put her lips around it, and sealed them over the morsel of food drove him crazy. He couldn't stop imagining those same lips wrapped around his cock, taking him in deep, sealing him in the moist, velvety texture of her mouth. When she bit into a slice of octopus, the way her teeth tore at it made him wonder if she was a biter. He was thankful the table wasn't made of glass.
He'd have been screwed if it had been because she'd have seen the raging hard-on in his pants. He could scent her desire, her interest, her passion. She wanted him as much as he wanted her. But she was holding back. He knew why he was preventing himself from carrying her to her cabin and taking her every which way he could, but he didn't know why she was pushing herself back. She clearly wanted him. Did she have someone at home she was being true to? Rafe hadn't mentioned anyone. He sucked a deep breath in, capturing the molecules carrying her scent, trapping them in his body, relishing the sensation as they melded with his panther. When she licked the creamy sauce from the lobster off her fingertip, he almost came undone. He felt the warmth of a drop slip out of the slit on his cock's head. His poor panther was in as much of a frenzy as he was. It took all of Nico's concentration to keep the jungle cat and his own pulse and discipline in line. He hated to say it, but he was damned ready for the dinner to end so he could get out of here before she made his balls explode in all the wrong ways. He had to get up or he'd lose it. He had to get away from the pheromones she was putting out. They were making him and his panther wild and fierce with craving. Chapter 6 Sophie wanted to giggle at the frustration she was building in her sexy dinner date, but she couldn't because she was in the same state of passion. She ached for him. She needed his body against hers. She pushed the thought away. She hadn't come here for this. She wasn't ready for this, and she sure as hell wasn't ready to reveal her secret to him. Or anyone. She blamed her tigress, but the problem was that her tigress wasn't the only one who was yielding to these intense sensations. Her nose crinkled as she inhaled his scent. It was pure male, mixed with musk and a hint of pine. She let her eyes close for a moment, savoring his aroma with her tigress's senses, enjoying the way his scent translated into a flavor. She licked her lips, almost unaware of the semi-orgasmic look of passion that crossed over her face. She swallowed hard, struggling to push images, sensations and emotions away. Her tigress fought her, bringing it all back in technicolor. When she finally opened her eyes, his gaze pierced through her. It was as if he could see her tigress and was communicating with her directly. Impossible. The sea air, the ambience of their surroundings, her stress level, all of it was contributing to her crazy thoughts. He moved in his seat from left to right, making a few adjustments. A grim smile made an appearance on his face. Excuse me. He shoved his chair away from the table. I'll be back in a moment. He strode away his walk-confident, sexy wide shoulders squared. He slipped into the shadows farther down the deck. Nico sank into the gloom behind a skiff and breathed the salty ocean air in as he looked out at the horizon. The sliver of a moon barely cast any light, though that didn't matter. He'd always wondered what it was like for humans when they were in the dark, handicapped by the dimness and their human vision. He took the opportunity to cool down his lust while his panther did the same. He didn't plan to be gone long, certainly didn't want her thinking he'd abandoned her, but if he didn't get out of there, he was afraid his panther would give them away. No matter how much hunter's block he'd used, there was no way he could hide it if his panther's pulse became too powerful and beat differently from his own. If that happened, Sophie's tigress would pick up the panther's pulse and she'd identify him as a shifter. He'd worked hard over the years to perfect his internal camouflage. The Sigma Eps were notorious for being able to hide among shifters, presenting themselves as humans. Then again, he'd never been around a stimulus like Sophie. She was the kind of catalyst that would propel him and his panther right onto her radar. He could see her from where he stood, and at the same time, he could keep an eye on the entire dining room. Out of the hundred guests on board, only thirty or so had decided to dine in the al fresco dining area. The rest of the guests had either chosen to dine inside or in their cabins. Why they would prefer either of those to dining out here, he had no idea. There were two couples left in the dining area. Two couples plus Sophie. He frowned when he saw four men walk across the other side of the dining area. There was something odd about their approach. Dressed all in black, they weren't crew members. 
Alarms went off for both him and his panther. Something wasn't right here. The men pulled black ski masks down over their faces and slipped into the dining area, pulling out automatic weapons. What the hell? He hoped Sophie would keep her cool. The men ordered the two couples and Sophie to a far corner, then out onto the deck. Now they weren't far from Nico, but he was still behind two stacked skiffs out of sight. He steadied his breathing. Be cool, Sophie. He readied himself to jump out and help her. Four men, he should be able to handle that many. One of the guests muttered something to the black-clad intruders. One of them raised his weapon and hit the guest in the head. The man collapsed, either dead or unconscious. Nico hoped for the latter. The muffled cries of the other two women drowned out what the intruder was saying. Sophie was stoic, her back stiff, shoulders straight. Nico didn't like her stance. It made him nervous that she'd try something. He concentrated on the intruders. They weren't shifters. Not paranormal creatures of any kind, as far as he could tell. The diners began to remove their jewelry and empty their pockets. Fucking thieves. This is about some jewelry and pocket cash. Fury burned inside Nico as the assailants picked up their loot. One of them was bitching at the other one. You said there were a hundred people here. What's this? Four people. He pointed his weapon toward the unconscious man. Empty his pockets. Get that Rolex too. The third man shook his masked head. This wasn't a total waste. The rest of the guys are going room to room, tying people down, collecting as much as they can. No thanks to your planning, though. He shook his weapon at the fourth man. Tie them up. Hurry. They'll be here to get us in less than five minutes. Sophie's breathing changed. Nico and his panther felt it. Damn. This can't be good. She'd better not shift. One intruder escorted the three still-standing guests out through the arched exit. Sophie stood her ground. Get away from me, she hissed at the assailant who approached her with duct tape in hand. No. For fuck's sake, Sophie. No. Sophie wasn't having it. With two of the assailants out of the dining area escorting the secured guests, only two remained. Sophie shifted far more quickly than Nico would have thought possible. Before he knew it, a magnificent orange tigress with vivid colors and a luxurious coat stood before the two thieves. She bared her fangs and sank them into the neck of one of the intruders before he could utter a sound. The other intruder opened his mouth to scream. Sophie pounced on him and took him out with one swipe of her paw and a snapping crunch as she bit into his neck. Shit. I can't go in there now. Not while she's in her tigress form. Not if he didn't want her to know. He knew she was a shifter. Did he want her to know? Not yet. The other two intruders returned with their weapons pointed at Sophie's tigress. Told you, one of them blurted. I told you there might be shifters on board. I heard rumors. Sophie snarled. The man raised a pistol. Nico groaned. That would only serve to piss her off. He needed to intervene, or they'd all be dead. Then there'd be authorities to deal with, then there'd be hassles. Then his cover would be blown. And she'd hate him for having lied to her. A million scenarios that all began with then she, or then I, or then it ran through his mind. Not a damned one boded well for Nico. He had to intervene. He stepped out from behind the skiffs. I'm prepared for shifters. The man was still talking as he pointed his pistol at Sophie. A dart flew out, pierced her hide, buried itself in her lush fur. Midleap, Sophie crashed to the ground. She didn't move. Damn. They had tranks. Nico abandoned the idea of shifting. He'd have to take them on in his human form, which was no problem as long as they didn't shoot him. Then he'd have to shift to heal. Crouching low, moving fast, he snuck up behind one man and took him down with a quick yank and snap of his neck. The other one moved away, raising his pistol. Not the damn Trank. Tranks hurt like hell. He braced himself but at the same time, threw his body to the right to avoid the dart. The man fired. 
Chapter 7 Sophie opened her eyes, but that was the last thing she wanted to do. Her tigress had told her she had to. I just want to sleep. Her tigress wouldn't let her. Sophie shook her head to clear it. Our tigress is awake, a gruff voice said with an Eastern European accent. She remembered everything. The men. Shifting. Killing too. Then a pistol. She knew right away what it was. A tranquilizer had been used on her. Damn them. She was tied to a chair with her hands behind her. She raised her head, looked around. She was still on the Bella. The sun was up outside. She'd been knocked out all night. Three men stood over her. They held trank pistols. Who might you be, my pretty? Another one axed her. He had an Australian accent. What was this? An international gang of thieves? I'm? She struggled to remember the name she'd given them. I'm Soleil Templeton. Have them run the name, the Aussie said to the Eastern European one. He nodded and left the room. They all had masks on. For that, maybe she should be thankful. That meant they didn't plan on killing her. She hoped. It completely and totally sucked, they knew she was a shifter. Sophie wanted to rub her head, which felt like it was full of cotton. Wait. What had happened to Nico? Had they killed him? Where is everyone else? Her words came out slurred. Crew and guests are chilling in cold storage, another bad guy said. This one had an American accent. He laughed at his own joke. Except for the cowboy, the Aussie said. Cowboy? Your date? He thought he was going to play cowboy. He's sleeping it off. He pointed to one of the leather seats where a huge muscular body lay on the cushions. Nico. Thank goodness he's alive. What was wrong with him? Then she figured it out. Why did you shoot him with a trank? It was the closest weapon at hand to use on him. He was going all Rambo on me. He laughed. He didn't Rambo for long. His face turned red, and his brows drew together in a V. Scowling, he added, he killed my best friend. He'll have to pay, sooner or later. We need to know his name, see if he's worth ransoming. If not, he dies immediately. If he's worth anything to anyone, he dies after we collect. Ransoming. They were pirates of some sort. When Giovanni Tiero finds out you've taken his ship, you'll be the one paying. I think we'll be okay, the Aussie said. The Eastern European returned. No Soleil Templeton. The Aussie raised a cell phone and took her picture. We'll find out who you are, Miss Templeton. He handed the phone to the Eastern European guy. Have them run this against all the shifters in the database. Database? What the hell? Who would have a database on shifters who wasn't a shifter? Who did these damned human pirates work for? Who cares? She wanted them off her father's ship and out of her life. The men were walking away when Sophie breathed a scent in. It was a familiar scent by now. Nico. But. There was something very different about it. Something off. She breathed deeply, ignoring the black-clad masked intruders and concentrated. Shifter. Nico was a shifter. Rage swarmed throughout her body. He was a shifter. He'd lied to her from the start, and this lie of omission was more egregious than any other lie he could have told her. Her attraction to him was a mockery. His attraction for her was a mockery. Their easy conversation had been fake. Everything she felt about him was fake, because it was based on a lie. Fury merged with her rage. Her tigress roared in her head. Wait. No. Her tigress was roaring at her. Why? What the hell is going on here? Sophie tuned her out. She wasn't going to listen to her tigress. A frown pulled at her features. She placed the majority of blame for her attraction to Nico on her tigress, a thought that made her tigress snarl. No. I don't want to hear it. 
Her tigress's roaring was relentless. There's no way he's more of an ally to me than these pirate bastards. He's on par with them. He's just as bad. Except Nico was more dangerous because he had infiltrated her emotions. She wanted to hate him. She gave him dirty looks. His hands were duct taped in front of him. His face was innocent in its state of unconsciousness. Innocent, my ass. She could feel his pulse. The other pulse, too. She studied him. Panther. Black Panther. She'd show his panther something. Damned liar. The Eastern European called the Aussie, then he and the American left the dining area. Nico's eye opened, just a slit. She gasped. He was awake. Liar, she hissed, so low only his shifter hearing could pick it up. He glanced at her. Your block wore off, you fucking liar. Be quiet, or you'll get us both killed. What do you care, she scoffed. Chapter 8 Nico glared at her. What the hell kind of question was that? What did he care? Of course he cared. Oh, and you're who you say you are. An expression of shame crossed her face before it was replaced with anger again. Don't worry about who I am. Who cares? He heard footsteps and closed his eyes. The intruders were back. Looks like facial recognition says you're Sophie Tierro. The Aussie was clearly the leader, at least on this ship. Let's take her and go, the American said. The loot's been transferred to our boat, and they're waiting for us. So let's go already. Bring her along. She'll be ransom or collateral if we need anything. What about him? The Aussie said. Let's take him too. Two hostages are better than one. We'll kill him so the authorities can see we mean business. Sophie gasped. Leave him here. He's no one. Oh. It was the Eastern European guy. If he's no one, what do you care? I bet he's a Tierro, the American added. For sure, let's take him with. Nico wasn't going to make it easy for them. He'd shift and kill them. Shit. What if they kill Sophie during that? Okay, scratch that idea. He'd get on their boat. They jostled him. Wake up, sleepyhead. He faked waking up groggily, acting like he was still under the influence of the trank dart. Clearly, these guys had experience with shifters. He'd have to look into them, if and when he got out of this jam. They escorted Sophie and Nico at gunpoint, not offering any help as they made their way down the makeshift ramp they'd set up between their boat and the cruise ship. Nico took stock of their boat. It wasn't too shabby. Large enough to house maybe thirty men. He counted four on the boat and four more behind him and Sophie. Surely between the two of them, they could shift and take down eight men. The only problem was, Nico wasn't being paid to have her fighting next to him. And truth be told, that wasn't where he wanted her anyway. He'd rather know she was safe and sound. Hurry up, the Aussie ordered. What about the people on the Bella? Sophie asks. What's going to happen to them? They'll be found adrift and rescued sooner or later. Then they'll tell Daddy we have you. And Daddy will get frantic, and we'll let them panic before we tell them the price for your release. You clearly don't know my father, she scoffed. If you think he's going to pay a penny for me, you don't know him at all. Oh, I think he will. We'll see. Sophie's voice sounded too confident. Sit. The American pointed to the deck with his weapon. Nico wished she'd quit baiting them. He'd rather they didn't kill her to prove a point. Would you shut up? He snapped at her. He hoped the thieves would think he and Sophie didn't get along, that they didn't work together. Shut up. You're such a fake, she snapped back. Who's the fake? The Aussie asked. I just met him. She turned her vitriol toward the thief. He said his name is Nico. Who the hell knows who he is? I say he's a soldier. He snapped my man's neck. That was a professional move. Unless you're an assassin. He pointed at the spot next to Sophie on the deck, 
indicating for Nico to take it. Nico didn't respond, but he settled next to Sophie. Sophie gave him a dirty look and scooted inches away so her body wasn't close to his. Yevgeny, the Aussie called to the Eastern European. Take his picture. No names, Yevgeny growled and snapped a picture of Nico. Good luck with that. Nico knew for a fact all the databases with his face in them had been wiped worldwide. He'd better come up with an answer for that. The thieves moved away, talking to each other. Nico wished they'd give him something he could use in his and Sophie's escape, but all they wanted to speak of was the haul they'd picked up on the Bella. The thieves' boat picked up speed and headed away from the cruise ship, which looked like a forlorn ghost ship as they left it in their wake. You're an assassin, she whispered. And you're. She paused. You know. I'm not a damned assassin. But yeah, I'm the other. And you're a liar. Why did you mislead me? I had to. I didn't want anyone to know. And to think I trusted you. You're not trustworthy. I am. He made sure she was staring into his eyes before he continued. I'm trustworthy for those I've given my trust to. And why haven't you given me your trust? The hurt in her tone went all the way to her eyes. You didn't even tell me your real name. He instantly regretted those words. Wow. I'm an asshole. That comment is going to come back to haunt me later. He'd have to make sure the moment he returned her to her family, he'd get the hell out of firing range. The pirates came back. You're not in the system. You're not in any system. Why would I be? I'm not a criminal. No. You see, you're not in any system at all, good or bad. So what's your name? The Aussie raised his pistol. Nico Andreakis. He hoped they wouldn't dig too deep. The Aussie nodded at Yevgeny, who then left. Sophie wouldn't look at Nico, and the thieves wouldn't stop staring at him. That was how the next 15 minutes passed until Yevgeny returned. Nico didn't care for the expression on the man's face. He released a pent-up breath. Would he have to shift and kill them all? Would Sophie shift with him, or would she shift and try to kill him? The Aussie and Yevgeny turned around to face him and Sophie. They had trank darts pulled. I don't know who you are, Yevgeny said. I don't know why you're here. Right now, you're only going to serve as a pawn to convince them we mean business. He didn't even have time to snarl. They shot their trank darts. One into Sophie. One into Nico. Chapter 9 Sophie woke up. Again. This trank thing was wreaking havoc on her body. Her head was fuzzy. Things felt different. What was it? She wasn't on water anymore. She glanced around and discovered she was in a little building made of solid stone. It had a window that was too small for an adult to slip out of, assuming he or she could remove the iron bars blocking it. She rose to her feet and realized the duct tape had been cut off. The sticky remnants still remained on her skin, which was red and raw where they'd ripped the tape loose while she'd been unconscious. Bastards. She looked for Nico. He was the closest thing she had to an ally while they were being held captive. He was lying on the floor, still out. She'd noticed as she was losing consciousness they'd shot him too. It seemed the Aussie had thought Yevgeny was going to shoot her, so he'd shot Nico. Then the American had shot her. She studied their accommodations, which seemed to be shifter-proof. She rose and went to the window. It was about four feet tall but only eight inches wide. Even if she was a skinny thing, she wouldn't have been able to get through that. And she was far from skinny. She peered down at her dress. It was torn, disheveled. If her father saw her in this condition, he'd kill her kidnappers. If he can find me. If he wanted to find her. The way she'd been avoiding him, she was sure she'd been forsaken. Truthfully, hadn't she forsaken her family lately? Choosing to go off on her own and not be involved in their issues? She'd picked no sides in their disagreements. So she stood for nothing, basically. 
She couldn't blame her brothers or her father for not ransoming her. She hadn't been much of a family member. At least if I'd taken a side, then I'd be taking a stand. Well, if she had to take a side, she'd side with her brothers. She had her own set of problems and secrets though. She wasn't about to involve them in her secret. Not that secret. Not a chance. A groan interrupted her thoughts. Nico. She was elated for a moment because she'd missed him. Then she remembered he was a traitor and gave him a dirty look. He groaned again and sat up. Shit. Where the hell are we? She pointed to the window. As far as I can tell, it's an island. What? Why? I heard them say they were going to ransom me. She allowed herself a self-deprecating smile. Little do they know. Little do they know what? No one in my family will want to pay my ransom. I've pissed damn near everyone off. His eyes took her in. Surely not. Surely yes. She nodded. She wanted to cry. She'd alienated both Vax and Rafe by not taking their sides. And Vela too, after she'd chosen a lion for a mate. In her father's eyes, Lila was probably the only one who hadn't gone against their code, except Lila had sided with their siblings. Like I should have. But Nico didn't need to know all that. He wasn't the man she'd thought she knew. He was a liar, and he was hiding something. He wasn't trustworthy, and he wasn't her friend. Voices approached. They're coming, she whispered. Nico dropped back down, pretending to be unconscious again. Yevgeny and the American strolled into her view. Princess is awake it seems, Yevgeny said. Her knight in shining armor seems to be knocked out still. The American laughed. You two really got the best of him. We're lucky he didn't die. Who cares if he dies? Yevgeny said. As long as she's alive. She's the money. He's a pawn. Expendable. Where are we? She asked them. On a luxury island, the American sneered. Yevgeny joined him in laughter. Where's your boss? I want to talk to him. It's just us, princess. The rest of them left. There are other boats to tend to. His smile was evil. You mean hijack? Whatever, the American said. They'll come back when they hear word from your father, Yevgeny added. My family has written me off, you idiot. They won't give you anything. Nico wanted to tell her to shut the hell up. That kind of talk would get her killed. She needed to be considered valuable. Fool. Tempting these idiots. Then it hit him. God, I'm such a fool myself because I'm in love with that fool. He and his panther were head over heels and tail in love with that fiery orange tigress. His panther roared. His panther had known all along she was their only mate. Nico heard a choking sound and chanced opening one eye a tiny bit. She was lying on the floor convulsing. Her body was spasming. His muscles bunched, ready to leap to her aid to make sure she didn't die. Then he noticed she winked at him during one of the convulsions. That was a wink, right? Shit. If he was wrong, he was risking her life. But her brother hadn't said she had seizures or anything of that nature. She kept on seizing, spasming over and over. What the hell? The American was yelling at Yevgeny. I don't know, he yelled back. Help her. The American's voice was frantic. Nico heard the sound of keys jingling. The squeal of a rusty door opening was the only sign he needed. He waited until they'd gathered around her, and then he sprang into action. He leapt up with a speed only a supernatural being would have, and used his military training to take them out of commission. Instead of shifting and killing them instantly, he incapacitated them with a series of kicks and chops. When he was done, Sophie got to her feet. Jesus! What took you so long? I was getting lightheaded from holding my breath for so long. He shook his head in disbelief. He was one of the best in his unit, and she was complaining. Okay. I get it. 
You still hate me, for whatever reason. Whatever reason. Sure, minimize it. She leaned down and looked at the American, then lifted his mask off. Why didn't you kill them? They may have information. They may be useful, if we have to trade our lives for them. Plus, dead bodies stink, and I'm not going to bury the bastards. She picked up the trank pistols the men had been carrying, and shot them each with a dart. Now let's get them tied up and gagged. She took the keys off them and walked out of the cell. She glanced back at him. Coming? He studied her figure, silhouetted in the sunshine. Jesus, she was beautiful, dangerous, and pissed. And goddamn, he wanted her. But he knew he'd have to wait. His panther roared in frustration. Chapter 10 Why didn't you tell me you're a shifter? Why did you hide that? Sophie couldn't keep her hurt from showing in her voice as they walked around the tiny island. On their right-hand side lay the ocean, sparkling like sapphires mixed with diamonds. On the other side was undergrowth, bushes, a few tropical trees, and volcanic rock between the beach and the undergrowth. They'd walked a few yards away from the building they'd been in. She turned around and stared at it. What is that place? It's an old church. She almost jumped for joy. There are people on this island? He shook his head. No. Like so many of the islands around Greece, this one is abandoned. The church is probably from the 11th or 12th century, I'd guess. Her dinner dress was a mess. Sand and surf had saturated the bottom half and made it far too heavy. She plopped down on a fallen tree. I can't walk anymore. I can't wear this damn dress. Look at it. She jerked the sodden fabric away from her legs. Let me help. Stand up. He gave her a hand and stood her on the log so he'd have better access. Nico extended a razor-tipped, lethal claw. Sophie's eyes widened. What the hell? Trust me, he said. She scoffed. Sure. You've been so very trustworthy up to this point. I don't even know your real name. It's Nico. He sheared off the bottom half of her dress, leaving her bare below mid-thigh. He didn't hurry to rise, leaving his hand on her leg just above the knee. Sophie held her breath. The feel of his hand on her thigh, even though his touch wasn't sexual, was beyond belief, over-the-top sexual. Her belly quivered. Deep inside her core, she felt a flutter. She hated herself for the weakness she felt with him, and at the same time, she loved it. He brought out a feeling in her she'd never experienced with anyone else. So, how do you know so much about this island? Greek churches, stuff like that, especially when you don't have a Greek accent. He let out a deep breath. Time to tell some truths, I guess. It's past time. She gave him a dirty look, but not for long, since at least he was willing to tell her the truth now. My parents died when I was young. My father's father brought me to an island called Syros to raise me. Until he died, that is. Then a distant relative from my mother's side gave me a home in the United States. Something about the way he'd said that concerned her, but she couldn't put her finger on it. Overthinking things again, she chided herself. It was a bad habit. Sounds sad, not having your parents around and then losing your grandfather too. I guess. His face was expressionless. I'm sure others have gone through worse. That was so long ago, it seems like several lifetimes ago. She could relate to that. Some of the things in her life felt as though they'd happened a long time ago, too. Sophie. His hand was still on her leg, his fingertips making tiny lazy circles on her flesh. She couldn't get her mind off the hypnotizing sensation. Yes. Her pulse rate was raised, her attraction to him heightened. Nico cleared his throat. Does your family know? She froze. Attraction gone. Sensations vanished. No. There's no way he would know. She let her breath out slowly. No what? I shouldn't have said anything. Forgive me. He put a hand out to help her down. She kicked off her useless high heels. No. Please. 
Her skin felt clammy. Tell me. No what? It's none of my business. Nico. She screamed his name. Anger, frustration, hormones all getting the best of her. Answer me, damn it. Tears streamed down her cheeks. Fuck, baby. He put his arms around her. I didn't mean to make you upset. Christ. Come here. She let him hold her, mostly because she had no one else she could share this with, not yet. No. She wasn't going to lie to herself or to her tigress. She let him hold her because there was something about him. Something she knew, deep down inside, and something her tigress seemed to have known for much longer than she had. She was falling for him. What her tigress knew was a horse of a whole different color. Her tigress knew he was the one for her. He was her fated mate. The one. I can't talk about it. It's too. Chapter 11 Were you? Do you have someone who? Nico struggled with the words. He didn't want to say them because saying them would make them real, and he thought they'd had something. A connection. Well, fuck. His panther thought they shared a lot more. His panther was certain she was meant for him. Is the father. Are you with him? She shook her head. No. It was one night. I was out alone, after work at after dark. I should have been more careful. They were rovers. A series of sobs shook her body. Two of them held me down. The third. Nico ground his teeth, clenched his hand into a fist. I killed him. I killed the one who did it. She buried her face in his shoulder. Her words were muffled, but he could make them out. The other two came back. They've come back for revenge more than once. I haven't told my family, except for one. How are you hiding the baby's heartbeat? She raised her head. That one family member has some connections. She gave me a tea that would allow me to mask the baby's heartbeat, but only for so long. She turned those beautiful aquamarine eyes his way. Nico melted. He'd give her the world if she asked him for it when she was looking at him like this. When did you first figure it out? She sniffled. Just now. How often do you have to drink the tea? Every morning. I miss this morning's cup. She grimaced. So much for secrets. I'll keep your secret, Sophie Tiero. I need to face the music anyway. You did nothing wrong. He tipped her face up, leaned in and placed his lips on hers. You're an amazing woman. She pulled back. Her laugh was bitter. No man's going to want me now. I'll have a little shifter cub in tow. Who'll want to deal with that? What's to deal with? Two for the price of one. He leaned forward, kissed her again, then smiled against her lips. I was thinking to go see Doc Evans. I was hoping he could help me with the delivery. I also need to visit my mother. I haven't seen her in a while. He realized she was babbling, probably from the stress. You should do those things. You should tell your family too. They'll support you. Are you kidding? I came here to get my thoughts together, to try to figure out how to do the right thing in this argument my siblings and my father are embroiled in. I'm the only one who hasn't broken the code. Though, if I deliver a wolf child, I'll be as good as a traitor, won't I? It's not a wolf. And it's not a boy. I'd put money on it being a girl. She looked into his eyes, a question in hers. The heartbeat. It's not a male. It's beating too fast. It's also not a wolf. My panther knows. Your tigress knows too. Haven't you brought this up to her? No. Her voice was vehement. You have way too many burdens for someone who's as young as you are, and in the middle of all this turmoil. I'm not that young. Far from young. Her cheeks were flushed from crying, the whites of her eyes veined with red from shedding tears. At that moment, Nico realized he wanted this woman more than anyone else. He wanted her more than he'd ever wanted anything. And he wanted her as she was. His cock grew hard. He tried to fight it, 
but everything she was called to everything he needed with such urgency and passion that even if he'd wanted to deny it, his panther wouldn't be denied. He wanted to be sensitive. He didn't want to do that to her, not after what she'd been through. Sophie. His voice was hoarse, colored with desire. If I don't get some space between us right this minute, woman, I'm going to take you and make you mine. Sophie didn't get off his lap. She didn't know where they were going from here. She had no idea what would happen after today, or tomorrow, or whenever they were rescued, but there was something about this man she had to be a part of. She wanted Nico to be the last man who'd been inside her body. Not the asshole who'd taken what he wanted. She wanted passion to be how she remembered sex, not the ordeal she'd been through. He licked his lips and her muscles flexed, deep inside, responding. I can't. She struggled to find the words while his erection pressed against her hip. I don't know how to say this. He opened his mouth to say something. She put a finger over his lips. Don't. The word was torn from her. Don't say anything. She took a deep breath, cleared her throat. I need this. I need you. Do you know what you're saying? He rasped, desire changing his voice. A growling sound came from deep within his chest. It was his panther. She nodded, placing her hand on his hardness. His growl was louder, filling her ears as he helped her off his lap, stood, and dropped his pants. Moisture pooled between her legs. Her desire for him seeped into her panties, then trailed between her thighs. Your dress. I don't want to tear it and leave you naked on this island. Never know who might join us. The lust in his voice was laced with mirth. She pushed him backward, seating him on the log and raised her dress to her hips. Nico's pupils dilated, and his panther's presence glowed in the depths of his eyes. He took her hand and pulled her onto his lap, straddling him. This wasn't how I imagined it would be. His voice was a hushed growl. I wanted to please you, Sophie, not just do this. Not like this. It's what I need, Nico. I need this. Now. He groaned as though her words were an aphrodisiac that sent him over the edge. He slid into her with a powerful plunge. She gasped, the sound torn from her tigress coming out in a snarl. She felt him deep, so very deep, his thickness stretching her as if he were holding her from the inside. She arched her body, head thrown back, a roar building deep within her chest. Heaven help her, this man had exactly what she needed. His lips pressed against her neck, his tongue traveling upward to her chin then downward. Sophie wrapped her legs around his waist, taking him deeper inside, sheathing him fully. His fingers dug into the flesh of her ass, pulling her closer to him, then pushing her off while he drove in relentlessly. Her body was on fire from the barrage of pleasure, from every plunge he made into her. She felt a scream building up in her, but had no power to control it. It started as a low moan that was building toward crescendo. He pummeled into her over and over, while the moan grew with the fierceness of every drive. She took her healing from him, as she took her pleasure. When the scream began to spiral out of control, he pulled her forward, drinking her cries into his mouth, taking the sound of her pleasures into himself while her muscles spasmed out of control, contracting and flexing around him. With a final orgasm that seized control of her body, she stiffened as aftershock followed aftershock. Nico grunted then cried out, his face a mask of lust and release, his cock spurting heat deep within her. She collapsed forward, her heartbeat synchronizing with his as she panted, his name a whisper that her tigress snarled over and over in her mind. Sophie, he groaned. What are you doing to me? Chapter 12 Nico felt bad. He told her that he was telling the truth. But he hadn't told her all the truth. Damn. How was he supposed to tell her that he'd been hired to look after her? It would make everything they'd done seem like a mockery now. What he wanted to tell her was he'd have wanted to be exactly where he was, with or without pay. She gazed up at him with those beautiful blue eyes, the amber in their depths filling him with so many emotions. He'd always held his emotions back. He'd done that since the day he lost his parents. But with her, not only did he feel, 
He also didn't mind showing some of those emotions. He touched his lips to her temple, giving her a featherlight kiss. Let's see how big the island is. Most of them aren't too large. I don't guess we'd get lucky enough to find an abandoned boat full of fuel. He laughed, rose to his feet, and took her hand. Tell me more about this island. About the history of it. He brushed the dirt and bark off her dress, his hand lingering on her ass, wishing he could give her a bath, then lick every inch of her flesh. I don't know about this island specifically, but the Aegean is full of these little abandoned islands. My grandfather used to take me to visit when we'd go out fishing. Some only have little churches on them. Some have monasteries that look like fortresses, others have remnants of ancient civilizations. A few were even being excavated. He shrugged. These things had been commonplace where he grew up. I didn't realize how special everything was when I was growing up here. It wasn't until years after Gavin's father had taken me away that I realized what I'd had. She stopped walking and stood there frozen, staring at him. Gavin. As in, Gavin Castro. He realized immediately he'd fucked up in a big way. There was no way a woman as smart as Sophie wouldn't put it together. Maybe, if he was lucky, she'd let it go. Yes, Gavin Castro. His mother and mine were sisters. They'd both passed on. But when Gavin's father heard that my grandfather had passed, he didn't want to leave me without anyone. I was in an orphanage at the time. So, if you're Gavin's cousin. Here we go. It's not a coincidence that you're here. He swallowed hard, but the damn lump wouldn't leave his throat. Not exactly. He managed to get the words out, despite the lump of clay in his throat. She bit down on her lip, then chewed it. A frown furrowed her brow. A series of emotions flashed over her face so quickly, he couldn't have identified them even if he'd wanted to. So by not exactly, you mean? She was clearly going to make him spell it out. He scratched the back of his neck, then scrubbed his hands over his face. There's no easy way to say this. Her hands landed on the hips he'd held on to earlier. The full lips he'd kissed were drawn into a line. Shit's going to hit the fan. He took the bull by the horns. Rafe hired me. On Gavin's recommendation. Tears sprang into her eyes quicker than a summer thunderstorm could roll in. So, the one guy that I first think is interested in me, the one guy I've been with since has to be paid to be around me. She turned her back to him, facing the ocean. She was unmoving. He got it. She felt betrayed. He wished he could help her understand that what they were sharing had nothing to do with Rafe or with being paid and everything to do with the attraction between them. He just didn't know how to say it. He'd never been good with words. Words weren't Nico's thing. Action was, especially if that action required tackling his enemies. So he stood there, equally silent, waiting for her to explode at him or make some kind of dire pronouncement. It was worse than that, though, because she didn't say anything at all, nor did she turn around. He exhaled the most painful breath he'd ever held. It was far more painful than all the times in Sigma Epps training he'd had to hold his breath underwater. Sigma Epps training had nothing on the emotional toil this was taking. He hurt for her. Here she was, pregnant with a baby her family might question her having, trying to juggle it on her own and keeping it a secret. And she had the family drama to handle, what with the younger Tierros bucking the older Tierro code of conduct. And I just threw her for a loop. Having sex completely complicated matters for her, he could see that. It didn't complicate anything for Nico. He knew what he wanted, and how he wanted it, but it wasn't all up to him. She had rights and decisions and choices to make. Sophie. Don't say my name. Her voice was cold. I don't exist for you. He opened his mouth then closed it, unsure what to say. Then in the distance, he heard the sound of a motor. He scanned the horizon on their side of the island. There's a boat coming. Sophie looked at him, heartbroken. His beautiful face, more handsome than that statue of a Greek god. That gorgeous body. 
She'd thought about being with him, making a future with him. And now she had no trust in him whatsoever. She turned toward the ocean, searching for the boat. She could hear the sound of its motor now, too. As angry as she was, as much as she wanted to sink into a well of self-pity, she couldn't. She had to get away from this island, to a safe place. A place where she'd never have to see Nico again. She'd never have to be reminded, she was a poor judge of character. Wait here. Nico put his hand on her arm. Stay out of sight in case things don't go exactly as I plan. He shifted and bounded away toward the building where they'd been held captive, the little church their captors had turned into a holding cell. Clearly, they'd done this more than once if they'd had the place converted to a cell before she and Nico were captured. She watched him go. His panther was large and pure black, magnificent, muscle-bound, just as his human was. The panther looked back at her once, his eyes locking with hers. Her tigress howled in sorrow in Sophie's head. Sophie pushed the tigress away. She wasn't having it. And yet she couldn't stop staring at the fierce panther as he took a series of giant leaps, ready to protect her and her baby with his life. Her tigress snarled. She didn't want to see either Nico or his panther hurt. Could she let him go on his own? What if he was outnumbered? What if he failed? For the baby's sake, she couldn't let him fail. She shifted into her tigress and followed him, keeping enough distance to not be noticed, but close enough to help him if he needed her. Nico slipped through the little church's open door. Sophie stayed behind a rock covered with old volcanic matter. They didn't have long to wait before the boat pulled ashore. It was a smaller boat than the one the kidnapping pirates had taken them aboard when they'd left the Bella. She noticed a shadow in the church's long, skinny, horizontal window. Nico, still in his panther form watching, his eyes glowed amber within their dark color. Three men jumped off the boat after throwing an anchor out to keep it from drifting. They sloshed through the water then slogged across the sand toward the church. They clearly didn't suspect anything, as they were jovial and had their weapons tucked away. Yevgeny. The Aussie called for his cohort. Probably sleeping, one of his fellow kidnappers said. He can't take a damn thing seriously, can he? Maybe. But what about Scott? That must be the American. Scott? The Aussie reached into his waistband and pulled out a pistol. Not good. Sophie prepared to leap. As soon as two of the men were inside the little church, she rushed the last one and swiped at him with a paw. A loud roar inside the church echoed within its walls. Sophie took another swipe, severing the man's jugular. With one bound she was inside the church. Nico, still in his panther, stood above the bodies of the two newly arrived, now dead men. Blood seeped out of his shoulder. He's been shot. Then she saw a dart in his hindquarters. He collapsed. The two men in the cell were trying to scream behind their gags, and it made her see red. She wanted to kill them, but she had something more important to worry about. She took a close look at Nico's wound. It wasn't life-threatening, if he'd rest and let it heal. His panther would heal his body better than he could as a human. But would the trank affect his rate of recuperation? Would it stall the healing process? She pushed her head against his, nuzzling it, and lay her body next to his sleek, muscular one. She licked the wound over and over then licked his shoulder, his neck. Her tigress picked up his heartbeat which was still strong. Maybe he could recuperate, while he was under the tranquilizer. She curled close to him, guarding him until he could awaken. When one of the men started to yell again behind his gag, she raised her head and gave him a warning snarl. The man's eyes widened and he fell silent. Clearly, he understood she would have no problem killing him and his cohort if they disrupted Nico's healing or if they gave their presence away to anyone else who came to the island. Chapter 13 Nico opened his eyes. He was in his panther form and he knew immediately where he was, in the little church. Those men had attacked him. He'd taken a round in the shoulder and a dart in his thigh. Sophie. His heart leapt in his chest. Christ. Was she okay? He'd almost jumped up to go look for her, 
when he realized there was a very warm sleeping tigress next to him. Sophie. Her body was up against his, warm with soft thick fur. Her head was tucked into the crook of his neck. He stretched a fraction, allowing himself to revel in the sensation of having her form move against his. He raised his head slowly, keeping his eyes on her, making sure he didn't disturb her. He allowed himself the luxury of examining every part of her, from the large, beautiful but lethal paws to her hindquarters, her belly, slightly swollen with a cub, her shoulders. The beautiful lines she made in her tigress form were rivaled by the full curves of her human form. He held back a breath, refusing to sigh. He lowered his nose so it was against her neck and breathed her in, letting her imprint on his mind and his soul. He knew she wanted nothing to do with him. He had already figured out she would vanish from his life completely once they'd gotten away from the island. She adjusted her body, but didn't move away from him. Her heartbeat changed, and he realized she was awake from the rhythm. He also sensed her desire for him, but it was latent, fused with anger. It dawned on Nico that he was sensing and scenting both Sophie and her tigress, and the two were at odds. The tigress was on board. She wanted him as fiercely as he wanted her. Sophie not so much. Sophie was clearly struggling. Part of her wanted him. Part of her didn't trust him. He picked up the scent of her distrust as vividly as if she'd screamed it at him. She wouldn't talk to him. But would she sink? Could the tigress get her to sink with him? He pushed for a sink and waited for a response. When she accepted his sink, it felt like a lid had been removed, allowing light to spill in. Thank you, Nico and his panther told her. I don't know why you're doing this. I want to talk to you. It's kind of late for talk, isn't it? You should have done that earlier. But she didn't move away. Nico took heart in that. Hope too, though it was probably foolish to do so. I know. I was hired to watch over you. Your brother didn't want you to know, though. She stretched, her body moving against his, her back against his chest, but she didn't say a word. He fought the desire, rising inside him. No matter what it seemed, he always had desire for her. When he was angry, when she was angry, when they were sad, when they were laughing, there wasn't a time he didn't want her. I can see what I have to say doesn't matter. She didn't argue the point. Fuck, he was about ready to give up. Or was he? He couldn't imagine a day of not seeing her, even if it meant seeing her when she was angry and hated him. I know I get into trouble on occasion, but it's not serious. Why the hell would my brother want someone to keep an eye on me? At least she was talking. Nico leaned closer, breathing her in again. He didn't tell me. You shouldn't have led me on. You were there on a job. A job that had a fixed ending date, I'm sure. Then you'd go on your way, and I'd be left with all these emotions. Did she really think he could leave her, the way he felt about her? No, Sophie. I shouldn't have done what I did, but I didn't plan to go anywhere. I just hadn't thought it out. I was going with my emotions. Christ, that sounded lame. How could he get her to understand what had driven him to her? He wasn't sure himself. The only thing he was sure about was he couldn't let it go. He couldn't let her go. I want to leave this island. I want to leave the cruise. I don't want to go back to the Bella. I want to go home. Her voice was forlorn, she sounded so alone. What else could he do but grant her wish? He stood and stretched his long, muscular panther body. He pushed at her with his forehead. Let's go. We'll take their boat. We'll find a way to get you back to your family. As soon as they'd exited the little church and left behind the bound and gagged kidnappers, they shifted to their human forms. Thank you for your help. Killing that guy. She nodded. How's your shoulder? It healed while I was unconscious. He'd scented her saliva on his now healed wound. He didn't tell her. He knew she'd licked at it when she was in her tigress form. She probably didn't want him to know she'd done that. Let's get on the boat. Get our bearings. Find an island. 
Do you know where we are? He laughed. The Aegean. That's all I know. I was a kid when I left here, but I'm pretty sure we're somewhere in the Dodecanese Island area. I'll just have to find an island that's inhabited. Before any other kidnappers show up. He didn't say that part out loud. Why worry her unnecessarily? An hour later, Nico was pulling up to one of the many islands in the area. They'd gotten lucky, a map on board had helped him navigate. He secured the boat to the dock with a length of rope. I'd kill for a shower and a fresh set of clothes, Sophie said. And a meal. I need to call Rafe, Nico said. That reminded her why she was so angry. Does that have to be the first thing you do? I'd like your family to know you're okay. Not to mention that the things you want take cash or credit cards. He patted his pockets. I've got neither. Remember? Thieves? Kidnappers. My wallet's gone. She huffed. I remember. Friendly townsfolk pointed them to the nearest hotel, a rustic two-story building that was definitely not part of a chain. The island was too small for a chain hotel, too small for a chain anything. She sat in the lobby while Nico used the phone. She'd never felt so powerless before. No ID, no money, no nothing. In her entire life, she'd never been in this position. Except once. That night. Nico stepped away from the front desk. It won't be long. Rafe isn't in Rome. The authorities notified your father about the Bella, but Rafe said he didn't tell anyone else you were there. The moment he found out, he and Jax came to Greece. They're one island over. He leaned closer and whispered, a bigger island. With an American hotel, if you're picky. I'm not like that. This place is fine. Can I get a shower? And some food? And who the hell is Jax? You mean Vax? My brother's name is Vax. He smiled. I got us you a room just in case. And lunch is being prepared. And no, he said Jax. I'm not hard of hearing. He must be mistaken. There was no Jax. It should bug her he knew her so well that he'd gotten her a room and had ordered her something to eat. But it didn't bug her, she was grateful. She gave him a puzzled look. You ordered food? Don't get pissed. I did it for the baby. She needs her sustenance. The woman from the front desk escorted them to a room, where she handed Sophie extra towels and a white luxurious bathrobe. Then she tried to usher both of them into the room. I'll be in the lobby, Nico told Sophie. She felt bad. He probably wanted a shower, too. You don't have to. She beckoned for him to join her inside. I trust you. I mean, I know what you meant. That you trust me not to seduce you. She nodded, but a blush kissed her cheeks with heat as she thought of their session on the island. The room was whitewashed rustic like someone's well-loved home. She liked its intimate feel, its home-like atmosphere. The painted cement floor. The furniture that was probably over a century old. This place is beautiful, she whispered. She went into the bathroom, closed the door behind her, turned on the water in the tub, and stepped out of her ripped, stinky, stained, bloody dress. Minutes later, she slipped into the water and gave in to the sigh that escaped her, luxuriating in the warmth surrounding her as she immersed herself all the way up to her neck. Sophie startled awake with a jerk and a giant splash. She took a second to get her bearings. She hadn't planned on falling asleep in the tub, but the warm water had relaxed her right to sleep. She splashed water on her face to wake up. The water had cooled. How long had she been out? What happened to Nico was her first thought. She'd have thought he would have awakened her. She jumped out of the tub, wrapped the towel around her hair, and slipped into the thick terry bathrobe. Then she jerked the door open. He was asleep on the bed. In repose his face was rested and innocent, not that of the hard man she'd seen fighting. Not the man she'd seen at the bar. He almost looked harmless and guiltless. Stop that, she told herself. She'd find it way too easy to forgive and forget, and jump into his arms. 
and it wasn't that easy, anyway. In a few short months, she'd have a baby. Some other man's baby. What man would want that? She added fuel to her anger, keeping it at bonfire level. There was food on the table, untouched. He hadn't even eaten without her. Her expression softened. She approached him and reached her hand out to awaken him. She'd almost touched him when his eyes flew open. Sophie jumped back with a gasp. Sorry. I was going to wake you, in case you wanted to take a shower. Thanks. He pointed to the table. Lunch. Though it seems it may be closer to dinner. She sat down in her bathrobe, towel still around her head. The hell with it, I'm eating. She tore a chunk of Greek bread off the loaf and dipped it in the olive oil at the bottom of the salad. I don't know what I'm going to do about clothes. Rafe said he's bringing our luggage from the Bella. Nico closed the bathroom door behind him. She heard the water running as she tore through some lamb, the Greek salad and half the baklava. She was licking her fingers clean of the honey from the baklava when he stepped out of the bathroom, a towel wrapped around his waist. Sophie looked away, though that was the last thing she wanted to do. It didn't matter, as brief as the glimpse had been, what she'd seen was imprinted on her memory. Wide shoulders, a chest that was perfect for scoring with her nails in the heat of passion, a set of abs that could double as a washboard. Heaven help her. She felt heat rise to her face at the same time that it flowed throughout her body and culminated in the one spot she needed to stay away from. She let a pent-up breath out. A knock on the door made her jump. Chapter 14 Nico? It was Rafe's voice. The first emotion that soared through Sophie was joy. Joy that her brother had found her and she could go home, away from the madness of the last few days. She opened the door. Rafe stared at her. Then he glanced behind her. At that point she realized how it appeared. Her in a bathrobe, Nico in a towel both in the same room, and the bed looked like someone had been in it. Rafe's eyes traveled between her and Nico. Suddenly, a flare of anger pierced through her embarrassment. She was an adult. She didn't owe anyone an explanation for her behavior. Something you want to tell me? Rafe's voice was calm. Like what? Hers sounded high-pitched even to her own ears. Why do I sound like that? and yet she couldn't control it. This? She waved her arms toward Nico, toward the room, the bed, her robe. This is nothing. It's not what it looks like. Rafe cocked his head. So the baby? That's not what it looks like, either? She turned and stared at Nico in disbelief. Did he have to say that? Did he have to say anything at all? Before she could register what reflex made her do, She'd lunged at Nico with both fists pumping. Sophie pummeled his chest, her rhythm relentless. Nico's instinctive action would have been to block her with deadly force. He turned off his instincts and let her blows rain on his chest. You told him. How dare you tell him? Her blue eyes flashed with an angry fire. I didn't. He kept his voice low and caught her fist. You had no right. She continued yelling, struggling to get loose. I didn't tell him anything. He still didn't raise his voice. Rafe grabbed her from behind and pulled her off while Nico held her hands. Sophie, Rafe said in her ear. Nico didn't tell me anything. She whirled around and faced him. Then how did you know? Blaze there. Alexa told him. He told me. I asked Nico to keep an eye on you. You should have told me. Her tone was accusatory. Maybe you should have told me. No, Rafe. It's my business. You having someone trail me, that's not your business. You don't see the difference. Nico saw the difference. He saw it clearly. He hoped Rafe did too. I do. Rafe nodded. So this baby. He looked at Sophie for an explanation. Sophie lowered her gaze. Nico's heart broke for her. He knew she didn't want to revisit the matter. It's mine, he told Rafe. Rafe raised a brow. But, 
Then he paused, glanced at Sophie, then back at Nico. It's mine, Nico repeated. That was all there was to say about it. She's a beautiful little girl. A tigress, orange and flashy, gorgeous like her mother. And she's mine. If anyone wants to discuss it in further detail, I'm available. Chapter 15 Understood, Rafe said. Sophie was speechless. There was no hint of insecurity in Nico's statement, no doubt, no question. His tone made it clear he'd brook no argument. He was claiming her baby as his, so she wouldn't have any problems with any of the shifter communities. Not that having a baby without a mate was the end of the world. It was that communities were known to rally to claim a child that might belong to one of theirs. Nico's actions would also quell any questions and any disgrace or disrespect that might have been directed at her. She turned away from Nico and her brother, pretending to adjust the curtains so they wouldn't see her tears. When she'd gotten control of her emotions, she faced them. Where's Vax? Rome? Rafe handed her suitcase to Nico, who put it on the bed. Thank you, she murmured. I thought you told Nico he was coming. Nico reaffirmed what he'd said earlier. No, I said Jax. He's right, Rafe said. It's Jax. Short for Jacqueline. Jacqueline Vasquez. Sophie studied her brother. Did I miss something while I was gone? Seems we both missed things while we were gone. Rafe looked at her stomach, still concealed under the bathrobe. Point taken. She's waiting downstairs, Rafe explained. I didn't want this to be the way she met you for the first time. In retrospect, I don't regret my decision. Sophie thought of the way she'd attacked Nico. She was relieved Rafe's mate hadn't been here to witness that. I'm glad. I don't want to scare her off so early. She doesn't scare easily, Rafe said with a secret smile. Shifter? Sophie acts. Rafe shook his head. Not a shifter. Human. Oh. Just great. Their father must be livid. And our father? Geo is Geo, Rafe said. Sophie nodded. That summed it up. Rafe grabbed the door handle. The boat's being fueled up so we can go home. After you get dressed, come downstairs and meet Jax. We'll get on the road. The Bella isn't finishing the cruise, of course. Do you want to get on another? It seemed every reason for going on the cruise had been flipped on its head. She'd come on the cruise to avoid facing an imaginary bull and had found herself directly in front of its horns. No. She bit her lip. I think I need to get home. Clear the air. Do what I need to do, then get on with my life. Without Nico. The thought saddened her, but she had enough to take care of. She had a baby on the way. When do I get to meet the rest of the family? Nico acts. What the hell? She whirled around and faced him. What do you mean? The rest of the Tierro family. Nico's tone indicated he thought there was nothing strange about his comment. You're not meeting the rest of the family. You're not meeting anyone. Why should you? That was all she needed, a constant reminder of his deception. He's claiming the baby, Rafe said. As if that made everything okay. Sophie yanked a pair of capris and a blouse from the suitcase. She subtly pulled her bra and panties out and tucked them between the capris and blouse. I'm going to get dressed. She walked toward the restroom. When I get back, I'm going downstairs. You're going to introduce me to Jax. Then we're getting on the boat, and you're taking me to Rome. Or Athens. Or wherever there's a damned airport. Then I'm flying back to Dallas. That's my home now. Sophie. Nico started. No. She cut him off and closed the door with a firm pull. Then she locked it. What the hell did you do to her? Rafe asked Nico as they headed to the lobby. Nico shook his head. He didn't want to say anything. What could he say? I had sex with her, but I hadn't told her anything about me. For some twisted reason, Nico completely understood where Sophie was coming from. He didn't blame her, but he couldn't tell that to his heart. 
or his panther. So, about the baby's father. Rafe began. Nico stopped him with a hand on his shoulder. I'm the baby's father. I don't ever want to hear you or anyone else say different unless it comes directly from Sophie. Rafe looked him in the eye, took his measure. Understood. He nodded. She's a stubborn one. She's not going to come around. I know. Nico frowned. But that doesn't change anything. They resumed walking toward the lobby. So who were the kidnappers, he asked Rafe. Evidently, a group that's recently moved into the Mediterranean area. They were working off the western coast of Mexico for a while. Then they moved up here. And the ones we left on the island. The authorities are aware. I'm indifferent as to whether they arrive at the island in a timely manner. Those bastards can die for all I care. Agreed. So, what are we going to do about my sister? I have a plan, if you're willing. You bet. She's hard-headed. She needs something more than subtlety. I can do direct. I can do it really well. Somehow, I have no doubt about that. Why are you willing to help me? Because I love my baby sister. I know you love her. And my tiger says she's your fated mate. Your tiger's right. I'm happy for her, especially now that I have my own happiness. Don't be prematurely happy. She's a tough one. I owe you a check, Rafe said. You've done more than any bodyguard would have. Nico shook his head. I wish I'd done some things differently. Come meet Jax. Don't worry so much. It'll work out. I have no doubt. Then why, Nico wondered, was doubt sitting so heavy on him? Nico told Rafe his plan. Rafe agreed to it, though it was risky and likely to set Sophie off. He said he was glad he wasn't going to be there to face her wrath. Jax had listened in to all of that. Don't you dare ever try that kind of shit with me, she said to Rafe. He smiled and kissed her on the cheek. Nico gazed at the attractive ebony-haired female, glowing with love for her mate. She had two different colors of polish on her toenails, crimson lips, and eyes for Rafe and no other. Rafe was a lucky man. Nico hoped one day Sophie would look at him in that way. He felt her before he saw her. A surge of power coursed through him. Sophie. She strode across the lobby. Nico's heart ached, watching her walk down the dimly lit hallway. Her blonde hair, the first thing he'd noticed on her, okay, that was a lie, it was her ass, but her hair was second, gleamed in the dim lighting, catching the flickering candle's glow reflecting it. He held his breath, appraising her glorious silhouette, a body made to be worshipped by man, one man. Him. She carried herself the same way she had when she was in her tigress form, with the self-assurance and cockiness he'd come to appreciate. He loved her stubborn, headstrong ways. He let his breath out slowly. He had one shot left. Sophie's face glowed with happiness for Rafe's newfound love. Her devotion to her brother was clear. She even seemed to have forgiven his interference by hiring Nico. So why is she so damn mad at me? Even after all this. Jax and Sophie embraced and took to each other with an ease that spoke of the love they shared for Rafe. It was a poignant moment for Nico. He didn't have a family. Not really. No siblings. No one he was close to other than Gavin. Ready to go. Rafe said to the ladies, glancing at Nico. More than ready, Sophie said. Chapter 16 Sophie steadied herself against the vessel's abrupt movement. She'd left Rafe and Jax at the wheel and gone below deck to get sunscreen from her suitcase. Okay, maybe that wasn't the only reason. She wiped away a tear that had escaped. Nico had been on the dock, probably waiting for her to change her mind, but she hadn't. She couldn't. Of all the people she'd met in her life, Nico was the one who could hurt her the most. She'd figured that out after they'd had sex. She'd known immediately afterward that her feelings for him were too strong. Then, when she'd found out he'd piled lie upon lie, 
she knew she couldn't let him in any more than she already had. The best cure for pain was prevention. She'd prevent him from ever being able to hurt her by keeping him out of her life. The boat's engine roared, and she was jarred by another sudden jerk forward. Then there was a burst of speed, and she could feel the vessel's movement as it cut through the water. She should go up and sit with Jax while Rafe took them back to Athens, but all she wanted to do was mope down here. She'd agreed to go to Rome, if only for a day or two. Rafe had told her Astra and Kane were in town. Astra had trained with Doc, and Rafe had said Astra could give Sophia a quick examination just to be sure, to make certain the baby was okay. Suck it up. She couldn't suck it up, no matter how many times she told herself to do that. She climbed up, her heart as heavy as if the anchor weighed it down. She looked for Jax. She wasn't where she'd been sitting before Sophie went below. Maybe she was with Rafe. She turned the corner. What the fuck? Nico. Her tigress released a loud, happy roar in her head. Sophie wanted to clap her hands over her ears the sound was so loud, drowning out the boat's engine. Drowning out the sounds of the world. It reverberated in her mind. His back was to her, as he guided the boat away from land. The island they'd left was a small entity afloat on a beautiful, crystalline sea of blue. Where the hell are Rafe and Jax? She stormed toward him and tapped him on the shoulder. He turned around. Turn it off. She raised her voice above the sound of the motor. Nothing. Now. He reached down and shut the engine off. The boat slid to a stop, rocking gently. Around them there was nothing but silence. The silence was deafening. Nico's face was hard. She drank him in. She took in the broad shoulders, the wide chest, the high cheekbones and a tan face, full lips that had kissed her so perfectly. Full lips she wished could have done so much more than just kiss her. He was here. And he was interfering with what she wanted. Where's my brother? He took another ride. Bullshit. Fury took hold of her, Fury because she couldn't control where they were going, Fury because she had no options. Nico had decided, and he'd implemented his decision. And her wishes were shit. Take me back then. I can't do that. The hell you can't. She reached for the keys, not that she knew how to steer this thing or even turn it on but she'd figure it out. By damn she would. Quicker than she'd anticipated, and before she could react, he'd snatch the keys out and doss them overboard. He crossed his arms over his chest, tendons on his forearms popping. I won't let you do what you're doing. She stared at the keys. They didn't have a float on them to keep them from sinking. They grew smaller and more difficult to see as they descended into the depths. Shock silenced her for a moment. Then she asks, so what is it that I'm doing? Throwing something away because you're afraid of it. I am not afraid. She refrained from stomping on the deck, though that was exactly what she wanted to do. Yeah. You're very afraid. Nico surveyed the horizon, the gleam of his panther flaring in his eyes, an amber glow deep in some place she wasn't sure she could ever go. Who the hell are you to say that about me? Anger made her pulse race. Anger and something else, something she couldn't put her finger on. I'm the mirror image of you. That's who. His gaze pinned her. What made him think he knew her? What is that supposed to mean? If you look deep down inside, I think you'll find the answer. I don't want the answer, I want. You want safety. You don't want anyone to hurt you. Tears burned her eyes, but she wouldn't allow them to come out. So what if I do, she demanded. She wanted him out of her head. If you don't take a chance. You had a chance. You lied. I didn't know the stakes. Nico couldn't keep sparring with her. It wasn't easy to keep this up. It tore him up inside, and it wasn't fair to stress her out this way, to make the baby pay for their conflict. What do you mean, you didn't know the stakes? She pushed her hair out of her face and turned toward the wind. It was time for him to own his shortcomings and fears. I've never felt like this before. Never had so much to lose. She whirled away from him, 
But just before she did, a wave of emotion flashed across her features. He couldn't peg it because she gave him her back so quickly, he didn't have enough time to really focus on it. No. Her voice was muffled. No. No what? What are you saying? I can't have you in my life. Nico felt an acute sting, sharper than the pain when he'd been shot. He'd taken rounds to his chest, and that had nothing on the pain her words had caused. Then I guess I won't trouble you. He took the lifeboat off the hangar. What are you doing? I'm leaving. You can't leave me here. I don't have any way to go anywhere. I'll float into some rocks or something. Your brother will be here to check on us shortly. He'll take you home. What are you going to do? Was that panic frosting her words? Do you care? He picked the lifeboat up on one side, ready to toss it overboard. Wait. She put her hand on his, stopping him from moving. Of course I care. I do. Then gently, she rubbed her belly. Was she okay? Was the baby? He waited, not wanting to interrupt her or push her. Is Pappas really your last name? What do you do? It is. I freelance now. And before now. War. I saw the worst of humanity. The very horrible things mankind and shifter kind can do to each other. He wasn't going to share that ugliness with her. She didn't need to have that touching her soul the way it had stained his. I was a soldier. With Gavin. She appraised him, as if she was trying to figure something out. He felt the battle within her, and took her hand. Why do you not listen to your tigress? She's far braver than I am. Too brave. Too quick to jump in. You have to believe. Sometimes. In someone. In something. He ran a hand over his head. The sun beat down on him, warming his body, though his heart felt like ice had been thrown on it. Are you going to teach the baby not to believe? Nicole. What? He stared at her. Her name. It's Nicole. He paused. But you're naming her after me. She's yours, right? Sophie's lower lip trembled. She bit down on it. You said so. I did. And I meant it. She'll need a father, a daddy. Doesn't every little girl need someone who dotes on her completely? Sophie looked far off into the distance, then nodded. Every little girl does. Even big girls do. Was what I did so unforgivable? Why do you push me away so hard? Because you have the capacity to hurt me. I won't. Ever. He tilted her head, making her face him. Listen to your tigress, Sophie. Chapter 17 Just like that, Sophie believed him. She had to take a risk. And she believed in her tigress. She couldn't keep running away from things every time they became a little bit difficult. And no one was going to fix this for her. If she wanted Nico, she'd have to put her heart at risk. Her tigress roared at her because she knew there was no risk in this man with the panther inside him. Everything he was, good or bad, fit perfectly with her own traits. It was as if he had been designed for her. It couldn't be this easy. She didn't believe that. There's one thing. His lips closed in, swooping down like an eagle taking its prey. The air was trapped in her lungs. In her chest a moan began, a whisper of a whimper. His tongue drove in, branding claiming. She returned the kiss, her passion fueled by his untamed panther wanting to claim the wildness within her tigress. She pulled away, breathless. So my brother is coming. His voice was equally husky, equally tormented by desire. He's supposed to. Why? I'd hate for him to interrupt anything. He smiled, that sexy crooked little smile she'd come to love. There's one thing. Something I need to tell you. I thought there'd be honesty between us. That you wouldn't hurt me. You'll appreciate this. And it's not dishonest. It's a contingency plan. So what is it? See that flag up there? 
Nico pointed to a white flag overhead. Sophie looked up. If we don't want to be disturbed, we replace it with the red one. She scowled at him but only halfway so. You were pretty sure of yourself. Your brother's idea, actually? I was pretty sure I'd be swimming back to the island. You didn't have faith in us? Nico pushed her chin up with his fingertip. I had faith that you're one hard-headed woman. You'll pay for that. You get diaper duty for the first week. As long as her first word is daddy. He pulled her close. Is that how it is? A glimmer of amusement shone in her eyes. He took a red flag out of a box, pulled the white one down, and replaced it. Now. He took her hand in his. I think I owe you a little something. The scent of her, a heady aroma sweet, with a hint of saltiness, filled his lungs, teasing his palate with a suggestion of her flavor. He dropped into an abyss of desire, hungry for her, thirsty for her heart. The sensation rolled over him in waves. This woman was his. Had always been meant to be his. He reached for her sundress and pulled it over her head. She stood before him, feet planted shoulder-width apart, arms by her sides, a full-figured goddess magnificent in the sunlight. Her pink bra showcased her breasts, so full they were overflowing the lace fabric. One thought ran though his mind. No two. Damn. And delicious. Her white cotton panties clung to her mound, teasing him with the outline of the bounty within. Take it off. His voice was husky, his panther making the request, though it seemed more a demand. She reached behind her, one snap and the fabric hung loose, cups clinging to the treasures within. Nico pulled the fabric off, releasing her from the bondage, setting her free to be pleasured. The hell with the panties. He unsheathed the claw and drew it across the fabric on both hips. The panties dropped. His hands cupped her breasts, his thumbs brushing over taut nipples, a delicate rose pink against her ivory flesh. He pinched a nipple, and she gasped in response. Nico lowered his head and touched his tongue to the pearlized tip. His thumb caressed the other nipple, rolling over it, pressing it in then pulling on it, pinching it. Her eyes were fixed on him, pupils dilated. Her scent rose growing stronger. He lowered his hand, roaming over her stomach while his tongue toyed with her nipple, and he alternately sucked and flicked it. He grazed it with his teeth as his hand passed over her thigh and made for the moist target at the apex. Her heartbeat thudded in his mind, trying to match his. He slid a finger over her sensitive little core, and she flinched, almost jumping. He parted her folds with his fingers, enjoying the scent that rose toward him, stronger, more musky, sexier than ever. He glided a finger along her wet folds, near her hot entrance. A whimper escaped her. She spread her legs farther. The scent of her became sheer torture. Her nails dug into his shoulders as he lowered himself, eye level to her pussy, where a nicely trimmed triangle of dark blonde hair greeted him, flagging his target. Nico paused to breathe her in, letting her essence sit on his tongue, teasing himself with a taste of her scent. One thumb on her clit, the other hand parting her, he blew on her mound, a slight breeze cooling the warm flesh. His cock pulsed with need, demanding entrance. Nico shoved his desire aside. This was for her. He led her to the bench seat on the deck and sat her down. Then he spread her legs and leaned back, admiring the view. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Her eyes flashed amber. Sophie's lungs still burned from holding her breath while he was touching her. Nico's smile was pure panther, pure predator, and pure lust. Sophie leaned back. Her breathing was erratic, as much as the clenching of the muscles deep in her channel was. She gripped the ledge of the bench seat with her toes, spreading herself wider for him, wanting him. He leaned in, his breath hot on her sex, so very different from the coolness of the sea wind. He swiped at her with his tongue, from the top of her entrance up over her clit. Oh heaven help me! She jerked in response, her muscles within seizing. That was the moment he drove two fingers in, stretching her while she was in the middle of flexing. She wiggled and pitched her body forward, wanting more of his fingers. He licked her clit, his tongue flicking with superhuman speed while his fingers pumped in and out, over and over. Slow. 
She panted. Slow down. Another pant. Or I'll. He picked up speed, pressing on, relentless in his pursuit of her pleasure. Oh damn. No. 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 She had no idea why she was saying no, or why she was fighting this. Give it to me, now. His demand was a growled hush. She pushed her legs out, putting them on his shoulders, locking his head between them, while deep inside her muscles tightened around his fingers. She screamed his name as a series of waves struck her and carried her into a monsoon of pleasure. She gushed her orgasm, releasing it onto his face. Sophie squealed. She'd never done that before. She gasped as another series of waves seized her. Another scream and she pitched forward. Tugging him upward, she kissed his lips, tasted herself, licked his bottom lip. She fumbled with his zipper while she kissed him, their tongues tangling in an eternal dance. Finally. She freed his hardness and took him in her hand. She pulled him close, rocked her hips, and pressed him against her moisture. I'm not done pleasing you. His words were sex husky. I want a totally different type of pleasure. She guided his length inside her, enjoying the velvety texture as it slipped from her hand into her waiting warmth. That feels incredible, she whispered in his ear her words punctuated by the waves lapping against the side of the boat. She wrapped her arms around his neck and hoisted herself closer to him, taking him in as deep as she could. You feel incredible, he groaned. He began to pump, drawing out then pushing in deeper and deeper, pressing against the back walls making her gasp with every thrust. He watched his cock going into her taking her, branding her. And she watched his face, relishing the look of passion merged with love. She squeezed her muscles, tightening around him, making him growl. He lifted his gaze to hers, leaned forward, locked her lips with his. She could still taste herself on his lips. It was a reminder of the amazing things he'd done to her with his mouth. She dug her nails into the flesh of his neck, making him grunt with the pleasure and pain of it. His grunting drove the tigress within her to greater heights. The sound of the waves lapping, their flesh slapping together and her wetness slurping with every thrust was the greatest form of an aphrodisiac. His hands dug into her ass, raising her and pulling her closer. He tore his lips away from hers. You. Are. Mine. With every word he drove into her deep, hard, pushing, demanding. Branding her pussy with his cock. Yes, he gasped. Yes. Yes. Yes his cock throbbing inside her, straining for release, swollen and ready to reach a pinnacle, Nico lowered his head, sank his canines into the ivory skin between her shoulder and neck and pierced her flesh. She screamed her pleasure, pushed by his bite into the throes of an orgasm that had her grasping him with all her might, taking him deeper, seeking his release. He pulled his canines out and licked the spot, as he drove deeper and shot his heat into her channel. With every spurt, she felt as if lava was coming out of him. She moaned as another climax pulled her into a frenzy, her body growing stiff, tiny shards of light exploding in the back of her head somewhere behind her eyes. Deep within, her tigress roared her pleasure, roared their bonding. Epilogue A few days later, Sophie and Nico had spent two days on the island while Rafe and Jax returned home. Now Sophie and Nico were in Rome. She took his hand, and they walked up the stairs to the Tierro Villa. The afternoon sun baked the air with the fragrance of pines. The ochre color of the villa was welcoming to Sophia, though a part of her dreaded the upcoming events. Her father would be here. There'd be a showdown, the one she'd anticipated and avoided. One of many, she'd anticipated and avoided. She took a deep breath. I'm here, you know. Nico's voice was low. I'm always here. Giving him a sideways glance, she nodded. I know. Some things are difficult though, no matter how many reinforcements you have. Maybe you'll be lucky, and you won't have to deal with him. Not yet. Maybe. If he's not back from Sicily yet. He goes down there to pout. Pouting for him can take days. So he's like you, he runs? Sophie quirked a brow at him. You didn't have to say it that way. She squeezed his hand. But you're right. 
I do take after him that way. Nico opened the door for her. The entryway was charged with emotions, she scented concern and fear. She tried to pinpoint who the scent was coming from but couldn't. Too many different scents. She glanced at Nico whose nostrils flared, he'd scented the same. They moved into the living room. Bax, Callie, Rafe and Jax were sitting on the couch in the love seat. Near them, a woman whose green eyes almost seemed to glow was sitting in a wing chair, and a giant of a man was standing behind them. Rafe made quick work of the introductions. Kane, Astra, my sister Sophie and her mate Nico. Sophie watched Bax. There was no sign of surprise on his face at the announcement she had a mate, so it was obvious Rafe had briefed everyone. She felt relieved she didn't have to go through any explanations. She still took the tea, waiting to announce the baby, hoping to avoid the hoopla. I've heard about you from May and Doc. Sophie smiled at Astra and Kane, the huge bear shifter standing behind Astra. Astra smiled, but her smile was strained and there were circles under her eyes. What's going on? The worry in the air was easy to scent. Maya, Callie said. Is she okay? Sophie looked to Rafe for an answer. In Dallas, Sophie had thought she might have been the one who was closest to Maya, but that wasn't saying much. The exotically beautiful, curvy leopard shifter kept to herself. Rafe frowned. She's gone. Where did she go? Sophie found it difficult to believe Maya would leave without having a job lined up. Rafe had provided her with work, and she had a place to stay here at the villa. Why would she leave? Jack stood and began pacing. I think she left because of me. She cared for Rafe, that was obvious. Then, when I entered the picture, her face was etched with concern. Even so, Rafe said, I never gave her a reason to think there was anything between us. And you never exchanged more than a greeting with her. It's not logical that she would just up and go. Is her suitcase here? Everything is gone. So she moved out, Kane said, making it sound as if that was perfectly logical. It did seem logical, Sophie had to admit. So why the panic? She was seen having a heated conversation with another shifter, Rafe said. The answer seemed simple to Sophie. Who? Just talk to him. Bax shook his head. No one we know. So he's trespassing? And no one can find him. I'm putting someone on it, Rafe said. I'm around if you need help, Nico said. Sophie looked at the man she'd fallen in love with. He kissed her on the temple. It seems I haven't paid you for the last job, Rafe said. I'd say I've been more than paid. Doubly compensated. Nico squeezed her hand, his eyes resting on her stomach. Sophie turned toward Astra and Kane, before a blush could threaten to give her away. How long are you in town? Do we get to spend some time with you? Astra glanced back at Kane. We're going to Monaco. Sophie gasped. That's where my mother is. She's the one who told me where Anya was, Rafe said. Jax and I were thinking of going there, so mother can meet Jax. Sophie hadn't seen her mother since her parents had split up. She stared at Nico, forming a question with her expression. You want to go, he asked her. If you don't mind. He smiled and wrapped an arm around her. Then let's go. Thank you for listening. This has been a Shifters Forever Worlds book by L. Thorne. Stay tuned for more episodes. Don't forget to subscribe and to ring the bell to be notified of new releases.